uh, re uh, repeatedly, with zero evidence, aside from me saying not wearing shoes in public is not, quote, involving children in a sex act. First come, first serve, right? Um, yeah, so I apologize, Malcolm uh, was here, yeah. I just think the topic was Riley lying and trying to cover her tracks by repeatedly calling the CSA victim a pedophile for not thinking that not wearing shoes is actually okay to do in public is a really good topic. Feel free to let me know. Um, you so added an extra not in there, but yeah. Oh, sorry, which word did I add? You said not thinking. So full background is that this is a, is a kink pride discourse, like meta debate, essentially, where in some random debate panel, Riley Grace Rochong, a person who you can't see who's on, on audio, claimed that it was a sex act that you were doing in front of children if you had a foot fetish and your partner was barefoot. Something like something along those lines. And you say, well, you shouldn't be doing that at Pride because that's a sex act. So you're involving children in a sex act. So it's like paedophilic, which is obviously a take of sorts. But I think the debate is going to start off on these kind of lines, which I think is where we're going. It's all right. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, no, I unblocked you. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I guess I want to begin. Mind if I ask like a couple? Whoa, 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 whoa. Can, we, can we go a little bit further? Oh, wait, which one? Oh, I just, I just think, I just think that you're leaving off a lot of really important information. Is it okay if we, if we read a little bit more? Well, I, in this tweet, it was just the two pictures. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that, 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 that tweet is just those two pictures, but that wasn't the end of our interaction, right? Um, there were a lot of other interactions. I asked you if you wanted to talk about gender. And I did ask. You actually said, feel free to talk about gender here when I, when I asked to come on and talk about this other topic. Um, yeah, I was interested in talking about multiple topics. Yeah. I thought that, that would be cool because I know that you've talked about gender before, and I am also someone who talks about gender a lot. Um, so I was super hecking interested in talking to you, but like, I know that you very strongly do not want to talk about gender with me, and I don't know why, but uh, yeah, you don't have to. I'm not going to force you to. Hmm. Um, hmm. So do you mind if I ask you, like, just in here, you said that I repeatedly called you a pedophile. So first, can I get, like, um, just, like, all of the places? Like, can you just tell me? Um, you can tell me if I, like... Well, how about I ask you a question? Like, yeah. Around the time, um, this summer, of the Kink at Pride conversation, um, did you private your Twitter and delete all of your tweets? Um, yeah, I did. I was getting a lot of harassment hmm. at that point. Oh, I'm sure you were depriving your account. I, I delete my account every once in a while and reactivate it when I'm, when I'm feeling a little, you know, I've got some other stuff to do and I don't want to focus on Twitter. Um, yeah, the reason I deleted or I deleted a lot of my content and I privated my account was because I was getting harassed a lot by people mostly associated with you and your community. Um, yeah, I was just getting like constantly, constantly harassed and I uh, was just recovering from surgery around that time. So I, uh, yeah, I just had to do that for my own mental health sake. You had to delete your tweets for um, mental health? Yeah, that's okay. a place where people can be able to harass me, yeah. I mean, you had your account private. It's a little hard. When you're private, well, yeah, I wanted to make sure that when I reopened it, because I wanted to make sure that when I reopened it, that people could not like go through and harass me with the tweets that were still on there. That was around. Can I ask what harassment means to you? I'm sorry for interrupting. If you want to finish what you were saying, I'm, I apologize. Yeah. So around, I'm trying to remember. Was that the kink of pride or around July? It was around. So that was wait, hold on. So that would have been that was Etheritage, right? There were a lot of people. Oh, who I wasn't. I didn't do anything to you about Etheritage. I've... Okay. I... Well, I know that like around that time, there were a lot of people who were sending me death threats. Oh, yeah, yeah, we saw some of those. Um, I think that that's pretty wrong to send you death threats. I think it's pretty inappropriate, pretty, pretty, pretty wrong. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I've experienced similar things. I'm sorry about that. You have a few members so of your I, community who like to say lots of things about me. Wait, hold on. So do you have, wait, hold on. Who in my community has done anything like that? Gammy. Gammy? Hold on, wait, Gammy is not part of my community. She's in your chat right now. Is anyone who's in my chat? Wait, hold on. You are in my chat. <laughs> Yeah, after I was blocked from here, because okay, um, hold on, yes. no, hold on. There's a hold on. I'm talking to a lot of people who I disagree with. This is the first time that Gammy has been in my chat in months. All right. Okay, that's fair. But do you remember when you posted a tweet a while back and you said here's some really good accounts that I think are really important for you to follow for good trans voices, and one of them was Gammy? Yeah, no, I remember that. So um, at some point, you were aware of a lot of the things, things that she was that, doing. Yeah, I wasn't aware of a lot of them. And also, full disclosure, Gammy is fucking wild on Twitter. Likes loads of trans med takes, and it's just an absolute kind of state. So I would also agree that Gammy is also. More problematic mm -hmm. things that Gammy had done. It's actually why I ended up deleting that, or part of the reason why I ended up deleting that and uh, disregarding that. But also, this okay. isn't part of the comment that we're. This isn't what we're talking about. You came oh, oh, about I mean, they're all kind of relevant. Like, you, you were talking about harassment, and I was, I was just curious what, uh, what, what you consider well, harassment. Well, you're asking because... me why I privated my account and deleted it. So well, I'm asking why you deleted tweets when harassment. you were yeah. telling people that 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 um others were 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 um. Hold quote, on, wait, are you saying... Yeah. All right. Do you have all right? So it's the allegations. So I just want to be very clear. Do you have any tweets, or are there any tweets that you're alleging where I called you a pedophile? Um, there were. I don't have any screenshots on me. You, you deleted them. So, um, oh, wait, wait. So hold but, on. So if I, because I would dispute that that is the case, but if I say that, then are you just going to accuse me of lying? Uh, accuse you of lying for, 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 I'm sorry, say that again. So I would say that I do not remember to the best of my ability ever tweeting calling you a pedophile. Do you have any screenshots or evidence of that being the case? Um, I, I have a video of you saying that I <clears throat> intentionally 
or unintentionally was justifying pedophilia. And um, okay, we're gonna go over that. But yeah, I want, yeah, we are gonna I go want over examples. It. Yeah, no, we'll go over that. But I just want to, you said multiple times. You said here that I called you a pedophile multiple times. I want to know exactly when those multiple times were. You deleted your Twitter I, or your tweets. I can't go find them, but I can find one. That, wait, so I would dispute. I would say that I never tweeted calling you a pedophile. Okay, you can you can hold that. I, I can't I can't push you on that. I believe that you did. You believe that I'm not gonna call you a liar. That's fine. Um, but you had a video in which you said it. I had a video. All right, so let's talk about that video because I think that's what you tweeted here, right? Yeah, and um, then your girlfriend, I'm assuming, um, that's what I was told. All right, hold on. Wrong. I'm not going to talk about the video. All right, hold on. I'm not here to defend what my girlfriend said. All right, mm, we're going okay. to talk about what I said. All right? So you're saying that this video is evidence of me calling you a pedophile. That's what you're saying. Um, I do think saying that someone is intentionally or unintentionally justifying pedophilia is calling them a pedophile because what you're saying is that they think it's okay to do sexual acts to children. No, 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 no. Don't twist my words. I don't think I twisted anything. I don't know. I don't think that you are being very honest when you say that. All right. So we can listen to the clip right now. I'll listen to it with my chat. Okay. All right? I guess I have to know. Let me come pull it up really quick. I don't, I don't have mine open. All right. Um, Hold on. Yeah, you have been with some wet ass people. Uh, you were the the time. There's a second clip. There's a second clip. She continues so, in level of unintelligible nonsense saying that King is defined in relation to sexuality, therefore involving children in sexual act. This is intentionally not the stupidest sleight of hand I've ever seen. What the fuck are you talking that's about? That's an insane, that's an insane thing to say to me. I don't, I don't know, like, how that's a defensible statement. Like, if you're defining something in relation to sexuality, and then you are suggesting that children should be involved in that, you're involving children in sexuality. That's, that's the most logically yes! valid string of... Uh, words that I can think of off the top of my head, right? So like, wait, I, are you done already? I think you. I think uh, you're I'm waiting for. I'm sorry, I was waiting for you. I was, I was oh, I'm sorry. I have a, I have a, a, a second one that has a little bit more context. That's a little bit longer than the one that I quote tweeted with. But that's okay. Um, uh, okay, so uh, we can both play it at the same time now if you want. Uh, all right. Wait, which one are you playing? Um, is it, is it the same clip? Well, here. How about I do this? What? I've got this one that's got a little bit fuller context. All right. When you say fuller context. Oh shit! I, was, I tried to deem it to you so you could see it. It's it's just the previous part of the video. I, I clicked the, the the one part because so the part I actually, actually say profile, uh, but the minute leading up to it, I also have a separate video of. But we can yeah. just watch the quick one if you really want. The yeah. 20 second one. Yeah. Well, it's the one that you tweeted at me. Yeah, the quote tweet. Mm -hmm. We can watch that one really quick. Ready? Okay. All right. Three, two, really one. Weird. A lot of people. Really weird. 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 Really I call you a pedophile. When you say that someone is intentionally or unintentionally, well, there's a couple places. No, um, no, hold, hold on. on. Let me hold on. That is not. Can I that is not calling you, ask you a pedophile. direct question, and you want me to finish my sentence? All right, that is not calling you a pedophile. That's saying that you advocated that you made an argument that is typical to expect that um, pedophiles would make. All right, that is my argument, and I stand by that argument. We can go into the well, merits of it. About splitting hairs so much, just say like you are a pedophile or you justify pedophilia. Like the, to split that hair, like. The, at the end of the day, like the thought process you have to go to to either do it or justify it are essentially, you know, to be able to morally just that you to be able to do it, you have to morally justify it to yourself as well. Anyway, so I'm not sure that you know splitting this hair is, really has any kind of utility, especially within you within the context of the conversation being all in hypothetical surrounding like kink and private stuff like that. Let's yeah. go into the merits because clearly, just talking about this one sentence isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so I think I think it's prudent of us to talk about your so definition. Can, can yeah, you so let's, well, let's, let's start with exactly what you said. All right. So you said, and I quote: "Some people like feet. If you go shoeless to a public event because your partner likes feet, mm -hmm. you're not quote involving children in a sexual act." That's yeah. what you said, right? That is what I said. You're talking about a foot fetish. I am talking about a foot fetish. I'm proud of you. Okay. So I want you to answer me this question. Mm -hmm. If you are getting off your partner's foot fetish around children, do you think it's not a little reasonable for someone to say, okay, this seems like something that a pedophile may argue. And this person either knows what they're doing or they are negligent and they're saying it even though they don't understand its implications. So nowhere in this tweet has anyone talked about getting off. Wait, hold on. What do you think happens when you appeal to someone's sexual kink? Or sorry, not sexual. We're talking about fetish. We're talking, talking about, about sexual fetish. desires is what we're talking, we're talking about. about. Yeah, yeah. we're talking about, no, we're talking about getting off someone else's No, fetish. you keep saying getting off. Why do you keep saying that? Because that's the only implication. All right, so I guess- Can I'm I give you about. an implication? You're allowed to ask questions if you're confused. I mean, I'm very much not confused. I can guarantee you that. But let me ask you a question. Well, so you haven't represented your... me correctly yet, so I, I think you might be just a little bit confused. I'm going to doubt that, but let me ask you a question. So oh. what is your definition of a sexual act? Um, 
<clears throat> so uh, sex acts is like super complex. I think the, the biggest issue that I actually have, and I mean not biggest, but the first issue I have is probably your definition of sex act. Um, if I remember correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I'll give you a chance to in just a second. Um, yeah. that, that, that a sex act is any action that occurs with um, sexual intent, sexual desire, right? Is that, is that about right? Uh, roughly, it's when you do something intentionally and primarily appealing to yours or someone else's sexual desires. Yeah, okay. So I think I got it about right. Um, so I think that this is so broad as to be useless and i don't think that any uh, legal system uh defines it this way for example um, i would disagree I, I, can, I would can, can i finish disagree. my sentence please yeah go ahead but I'm, I'm just saying like i disagree with that i just don't know why you have to interrupt me when i'm in the middle of talking well i'm just saying that i disagree with that I'm okay well in my state i looked up the sex acts law and they actually so i live in north carolina and criminal law designates differences between sex acts sexual contact sexual activity and sexual penetration um they define sex acts as the sexual contact of one or more sex organs including but not limited to cunnilingus fellatio analingus or in, uh, anal intercourse or the penetration of any object into the genital or anal opening of another person's body sexual contact is a focus on touching a person's quote intimate parts sexual penetration is we can understand that and sexual activity the, the main thing they listed there was masturbation um okay so so we have a lot of different um so it's a very varied um the legal system is a very varied way of, of approaching these kinds of discussions um and yeah a, uh, so i actually there's some interesting context because I've actually taken, so as you know, I'm a law student, I've actually taken criminal law. Are you familiar with the history of how we've gotten into like our modern um, common law rape standard? Uh, I, I probably don't know the history as well as you do being a law student, but I was actually in the middle of talking. Um, I don't know well, again, why you interrupted me. I was, I was actually, you asked me a really direct question and I was actually walking my way through it. I, I don't know why you keep doing this. It's, I mean, like if you keep talking and you just keep going on and you- I just listed the legal answer. system sex acts and the way that it differentiates between it because one of my points here anything? is Sorry, that this is a anything? very nuanced conversation. And I think you lose some of the nuance that I think is really important to this conversation. You're right. So we can go through that and we can talk about why those definitions are in fact problematic because the history of the evolution of the legal standard for what constitutes a sex act, a sex act, um, a sex act has actually been to broaden it more over time. Historically, rape was only the penetration of a vagina by a penis by a man of a woman um, and true. using excessive force. But yeah, the reason why that's not the standard anymore, the reason why that's not the standard anymore is because we realize that actually sex acts are a lot more than just physical penetration. That's true. Yeah, that is true. So I would not say that the law is a good heuristic to be able to rely on in this conversation since we are able to recognize that sex and sex acts are a lot more than just basic forms of penetration. I agree. I actually listed things that weren't penetration. I listed yeah, multiple I things that, that weren't penetration. Broader, and I would say that we still need a broader understanding of sex acts because you end up excluding a lot of very harmful situations that run into the problem of violating one's consent. That is where I was going to move the conversation as a question of consent. And because um, you seem to, again, correct me if I'm wrong, have a view that um, we consent to seeing things in public, that that's like a thing that happens. No, wait, hold on. My exact view in respect to consent, especially as it concerns sex, is that if you are going to, if someone is going to involve you in a sex act or do something around you as a sex act, then you need to acquire their consent to do that. If you do not, then you violate their consent. You categorically cause them harm. Children cannot. Wait, consent how do you cause them harm? Because you're violating a fundamental deontological rule. That doesn't mean anything. Can you explain that? Yeah, there are certain things which, if you do, they are inherently morally wrong. Murder is an example. If you do it, is inherently morally wrong. Why? Violating someone's consent is inherently morally wrong. The reason why it goes back to the Kantian categorical. Um, no, you can't. You can't just deontologically reason your way around to murder. Like, you have to. Like, the whole point of why murder, murder is bad is, you know, it's a utilitarian thing. Like, death is not something that somebody would want. Like, <laughs> unless of course it is consensual, in which case they would do so. So that's why they have to consent to it because it, you know, the consequence is as such causes the person material harm in that. They end up fucking dead. Not it's a, that's 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 utilitarian rule, not a de not a deontological rule. That doesn't make any sense, Riley. Imperative. If we were to do certain things in society, then that would mean that we end up leading to a contradiction, whereas we end up not being able to have the thing that we wanted to begin with. If you go around violating other people's consent, then we end up justifying a world where anyone can violate anyone's consent. We no longer have consent. And I really care about consent, so I say we do everything we can to respect consent, especially concerning sex. I think we should absolutely respect consent too. I think it's really important. I just don't think that when it comes to the public, that there is a very good um, uh, argument for um, uh, seeing something being involved in it. Now we're, we're not even in the, 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 no, it's not it's not the seeing the thing. All right, that's not the issue. The issue is not seeing the. Well, I mean, like it's sort of seeing the thing. It, it is. You say that it's about seeing that, that they don't have. You haven't gotten the consent of no. others to see it to hold be on. around you while no. you do it. Wait, hold on. No, I thought I that's what make... you just said. I'm sorry if it's not. I was just no. We're, no, we're focusing on consent, and the yeah. consent is either about the risk. It's either about being involved in the sex act or the risk yeah, of yeah. being involved. With some wet okay. Key word, key word so, I'm to tell you. what does being involved mean? Because it uh, seems it like sexual act. There's a lot of different sex acts. I would say, for example, we can imagine situations where people, in, like in the BDSM community, 
are engaging in a sexual act where both are getting off despite the fact that they may not be touching each other at all. Like we can easily imagine this kind of a conversation. Or we can imagine like if someone is watching porn, we can imagine that like, oh, well, in that case, they're not touching another person. They're probably engaging in some kind of sex act. Or like phone sex, which has sex in the name. You're not talking to another person. We would call that a sex act. Or you are talking to another person, but it's digital, right? Like the whole point is that I want to make sure that we have a comprehensive definition of sex because I think that any of these, I think that any of these instances, you would agree with me, constitute sex. And if not, we end up getting into incredibly dangerous situations. Any of the things that you just listed constitute sex? Um, I would say that they are sex acts, specifically. Yeah. Like, for example, um, let's say, here, we'll, we'll go through some hypotheticals. Let's say that you are interacting, um, let's say that you have like a crush on some, or you know someone else who has like a crush on a coworker, wherever it is that you work. Hypothetical right? got out really quick. So I know somebody who has a crush on a coworker. Okay. okay. And let's say that in that instance, the person who has the crush takes a picture of the coworker without their knowledge and ends up masturbating to it without their consent. Would you agree with me that this is something which is morally wrong? Um... I think that the taking depends on the kind of picture um, and the expectation of what? Let's just say that it's just them in their work uniform. Um, I don't know if I can morally condemn someone for masturbating and thinking about somebody. Taking a picture without somebody's consent is like the strange part. Okay, hold on. Now, all right, what, that's a, that's an interesting, you have to, all right, let's, let's elaborate on that then. All right, then let's say that after that coworker masturbates to the person who they did not acquire the consent, you will masturbate to that person, that they go and they tell that person that they masturbated to them. Would you reasonably expect that the person who was masturbated to without their knowledge would probably feel violated to some degree. Uh, I, I don't have to consider it. It's happened to me. Yeah, it's a little weird. Okay, cool. So why is, no, it's not just weird. You would say that that's morally wrong. Um, we're gonna have a moral problem in this debate. I'm trying not to like make it the point because it doesn't matter, but. No, it, it, wait, hold on. It absolutely does. Violating someone's consent. I'm sorry. Or not, I want to make sure that we are protecting people. I don't believe in morals the way that you do. So I'm trying to avoid that kind of conversation because we don't need to have a metal ethical conversation in this discussion. I don't think that I could say that it's morally wrong to masturbate to somebody, but I think telling them is strange. I don't know if I would say it's morally wrong. It clearly is no, going to make them uncomfortable. Is, but now is, wait, so hold on. So if you're if you masturbate to someone else and you don't get their consent. Well that's the th that's the big difference here. Like that's the that's like the actual material difference is that if you do it and they have never find out or whatever, and you don't tell anybody, it's only in your head. Like that won't cause them any any uncomfort, any discomfort because they they can't, no one has the ability to mind read. Obviously, there is an issue with taking a photo of somebody without their consent because that photo can't might not just stay in the realm of yourself. If you take the picture and then you never show anybody, you masturbate thinking about it, and then you delete the picture, or whatever. Then sure, maybe I can see an argument for that being moral, that being morally okay. But just to say that essentially. This what Riley's whole argument hinges on the idea of masturbating, thinking about someone, never telling anybody for the first half, or then the second half is telling them, and saying that that is morally incorrect based on the deontological rule that Riley has said. That I don't think myself nor neither myself nor Doe uh, agree with in any in that kind of uh, in any general sense, right? I would make the distinction between the material harm caused of doing it and telling them because. That would make it feel awkward for them. That would feel violating, which is un makes them feel unhappy, which is a you know negative utility. But if you don't tell them, and it stays in your head forever, who the fuck cares? What does that do to the world? Like, I don't, I, I, I don't follow Riley's. I guess, like, for her, like axiomatically, doing something in any way that involves thinking about someone violate some kind of deontological rule but that involves basically that just means that everyone has their own certain axioms and then that essentially that that that's the end of the debate say like, okay well you think that it's axiomatically bad well no one else does so that's what we that's how we're going to legislate that's how we're going to that's how we're going to move the thing forward if you're going to make an argument that has to apply to everybody there has to be some kind of material consequence for the thing that you're doing such as for example allowing kink of pride now that's a separate discord a separate conversation which i i would have some different takes on both of these both of these people i think i think i'd have different takes on both of them with regard to you know the overall material um differences that are made by allowing kink of pride or not but to say that it is bad because it violates a maximatic principle that i hold that doesn't really track on to the wider movement in general then it's fine as long as they don't find out yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I I would say that there are ways that it can be wrong. Um, what are the ways? Um, I think that 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 sexual desire towards children. Um, no, we're no. Hold be... on. Wait. Pause. No, we're talking about the nature of what is a sex act. Do not pivot away from this. I'm, Why I wasn't would it trying be wrong? To pivot away. I was trying to tell you an example of where I thought it would be wrong. Okay, so the the example would be wrong if it would be children. Yeah, I think that there's something inherently predatory about. Um... Right. So what if we're talking about an adult? 
yeah, that's what I was working to. Um, I, I don't think that, that I can say that it's wrong to think about somebody and masturbate to them. Even if you don't, all right, so why, why do you think that if they ended up going to tell, if you masturbate to someone, that if you go and you tell that person you masturbate to them, why do you think that they might be a little put off? Um, because you've, you've, you've made them into an object a little bit in your mind. Um, even if you consider them as a full subject, um, the, 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 it's objectification. Is, is hold on, no, the average person, no, the average person, oh, hold on. Yeah, and it's not, that's not necessarily the case, sure. all right? That's not necessarily the case. And I also, again, if that's just in your mind, I don't necessarily think that's some kind of, I don't think there's any kind of real harm in that. I really care. Whereas the telling them and making them feel awkward, making them less less comfortable, that makes, that is, you know, it's materially worse for them. It could be the case where you actually, like, totally, no, you just, like, you're really infatuated with them. You see them totally as a person, but you masturbate to them without their consent. Sure. I think that there's still a level of objectification that can occur there. It doesn't have to, but yeah. So uh, wait, but they can you feel, reason, do you think that's you feel like an object when you're told? Put, if they're told that they're masturbated to without acquiring their consent. Can you ask that question again? I was trying to talk. I didn't know that you're talking. What'd you say? You, all right. Do you think that is the only reason why someone who learns that they were masturbated to without their consent would be off-put at learning that new knowledge? Do I think that they would be off-put? Is that what you just asked? I'm asking you, do you think that the reason that you... Yeah, exactly. exactly. I absolutely agree. Um, the, the harm that comes out from the situation that Riley is describing is from the telling. It's telling the person, involving them, and then making them you know, unhappy with what you're telling them, like making their life less comfortable for them. That's the issue. What you're thinking in your own head, that, that's completely irrelevant. There's no issue at all with that. You gave us the only reason why. No, I, I already said that. I think that the reasons can be multitudinous. Like, it, like what? Um... Well, uh, being becoming a sexualized object in the mind of somebody else is itself. I, I know I did. Uh, so say something else. I don't know the reasons that everyone might come away with feeling a negative feeling from a particular event. Lots of okay, things. I'm going to give the answer. Now, the answer is violating their consent. But you did violate the their mind. consent. You did violate their consent. Yes, you did. If so, this person is hypothetical, masturbated to someone else and did not acquire their consent to do so, you violated their consent. How did you violate their well, no, because they're not involved in anything. They're not involved in any of the process of your thinking and then, and then also, ma also masturbating. They're not involved in any of the process. As soon as you tell them, you've involved them, and that's where the violation of consent comes in. Because they're actually involved in the act that's taking place in its totality, the act of masturbating about them and then telling them, right? The telling person you masturbate to them depends on relationships with them. Some people might be flattered or like it, others might not like it. You know, sometimes component can be taken as depending on relationship with them. Well, I, I think that's true. I think we have to take everything on a case by case basis. But in the, I think in the hypothetical that Doe and Riley are both talking about here, I think I just kind of assumed within the hypothetical that it does make them uncomfortable, right? So and it, again, it's definitely it's gonna be different based on the individual circumstances of each instance of this happening. But I think in just specifically in this hypothetical, they are generally they are generally in general talking about a situation where someone is made uncomfortable by, by the fact that you have told them, right? Which again, you know, that's why I think there's the issue there, because then you make them uncomfortable. Their consent. Because you involve you were able to use an aspect of them to get yourself off sexually without their permission. You used your mind to get yourself off. You used that person, the image of that person. Yeah. Hold on, wait, all right, let me ask you another question. No, hold on, this is, so is the problem like if someone does not know that you use them to get off sexually, then it's fine? Well, it depends on how you use them. Why does it depend? Well, because there are some ways where you can physically use somebody and there are some ways in which the, it, it remains entirely in your mind. I don't think desire Why? itself is, is no. requires somebody else's consent. Why does the physicality matter? There are easily sex acts that we can imagine, which are not strictly physical. Can you name one for me? Like masturbating to someone. Um, but you didn't do an action to them. Yeah, but you're using them. You are using, using your their mind. In their mind, you're imagining them. If you have the picture, like I said, the picture seems to be like like the weird part of that. But like, all right, hold on. I'm going to give you another example, and I'm going to ask you to distinguish it. All right, because I want to. I'm trying to get exactly like what your morals are here. If you have someone, let's say that you have a person who goes out into public, all right, and they have a humiliation fetish. Yeah. Okay. And they go out in front of anyone. It could be children, but just anyone who has not provided consent. And they, I don't know. Let's say that they like defecate themselves. All right. And they have a scab fetish too. Jesus. Uh, I don't. I don't know why you're trying to get like ad homs or whatever in. Wait, anyway, wait, no, no, that wasn't it. That wasn't. I said I don't know why they have a scat fetish. That wasn't. I was joking. I, you gave them one fetish and then you added another. I just was being silly. I'm sorry. I wasn't well, trying to ad hom you. It's a, it's a. We're talking about someone with a humiliation fetish. All right. The point is that they go out into public. All right. And then around other people, they defecate themselves. Other people see them, and as a consequence of other people seeing them, they orgasm, specifically because other people watch them. Would you say that this violates the consent of the other people watching them? 
No, I don't think so. What? All right, hold on, wait, no, why? You need to, you need to justify that right now. Because I don't think you consent to things you see in public. So literally, if you are using the site, I would like to point out, Doctor, that, that it's Riley Grace for a song, and she's a law student. She has fucking law brain. She did, like, she was talking about, like, the Destiny Bosch beef or whatever on Twitter, and she reached a fucking like, letter headed legal document about streamer beef. She's off the fucking chain. Well, I do think in this situation, I think Riley does have some merit because, you know, people who are looking at you whilst you are coming and shitting yourself at the same time. Might be a bit off put. Might be a little bit it might be a little bit revolting and disgusting. Like, I understand that in general, people have different kind of ideas of what's revolting and disgusting. Like there are some people who find the existence of you know, marginalized, you know, sexualities. They find those people disgusting in general. But, you know, I think there is a reasonably distinct line between someone just existing as a person in a way that somebody else likes and somebody shitting and coming themselves. Um at the same time, visually in front of people. Like, maybe, maybe I'm just a fucking stick in the mouth. Maybe my belief in the idea that it is a universal truth that, um, that it, that coming and shitting yourself at the same time in public might make people, is, is a universal thing that makes people uncomfortable. I, apparently, according to Riley, apparently it is possible for somebody to do that both at the same time. I think it's a universal symbol of disgust for the vast majority of of the population also you know shit has lots of stuff in it that you wouldn't want to get in front of people but i think making them watch you do that is like tangentially getting them involved in the sex act so i think this has more merit than what um um doe is giving it credit for although i do think that i think in the clip that i saw they were talking about feet festures and which is like well if someone thinks it's sexy when you have like when you've some of the foot fetish is thinks it's sexy when you have your when you have your shoes off you do that in public well no you're not coming there's no sex act like like for example if you shit yourself in public on your own i think that's bad but i wouldn't call it like a moral wrong committed against the people watching i just think it's bad form i guess i don't know okay my knowledge of moral philosophy is inherently flawed so I'm again. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really well read enough on moral philosophy to give a proper answer on that. I mean, it, I mean, yeah, maybe it maybe it's. I mean, if it's it definitely if it's intentional. Like if it's inten like you should. You, I mean, you shouldn't shit yourself in public. Again, I don't know what whether that would meet the standard for for something morally reprehensible, but it's definitely bad definitely bad but again the issue that we have here right when we're talking about the idea of king cat pride the, the, the main issue i have with the person shitting and coming themselves at the same time in public is the idea that you've come from it right that is essentially getting people involved in your sex act because the act of being humiliated by shitting yourself is because other people can see you do it right that's why it's people the game getting people involved in the sex act because if they weren't there you wouldn't be humiliated and it wouldn't be um Uh, and you, they, there would be no sex act going on. Like, you wouldn't come if people weren't there. This is such an odd conversation to be having on Twitch, but hey ho, here we are. Uh, I Liverpool won today, so that's what I care about. That's, that, that's a fair enough, that's a fair enough assessment. You don't, no one wants other people to shit in public, right? Anyway, let's continue. Right, ...of somebody else to be able to sexually satisfy yourself, you're totally fine with that. I don't. I just don't think that you violated their consent. We can maybe talk about other Why? other parts. Of Why that. do you not violate their consent? Because you don't consent to things you see in public. I've said this like this isn't no. We're no. We're, we're not talking about just seeing something in public. We're talking about using someone else, specifically in this case, their site, in order to get off. Yeah, I don't think you violated their consent. You didn't do anything to them. Oh my no. I all right. I see. I don't know what your ethics are. I absolutely reject this. I want that. I one bajillion percent reject this. Okay. If you generalize this, this is a this is an awful precedent to set. Consent. I don't know why consent is, is extends to what you see. Uh, what is what is because that? in this case you are using somebody else to gratify yourself sexually in that moment. They're aware. All right. They are aware. Everyone is involved in this. There just happens to doesn't. There just happens to not be any physical contact. Sure. So you are absolute. You're fine. This person, the person that we're talking about, literally uses other people for sex without their consent. You're fine with that. Um, 
they use the vision of other people. Use it because you keep saying like using the people. It's a weird. They thing. are. They have a humiliation fetish. They can only get off from the vision, like from being humiliated in front of other people. Sure. So you're fine with that. I just don't think it's violating other people's consent. I, I think we can talk about other. What if, other hold on. So what if those other people are children? Are you still fine with it? Um, if you do it intentionally around children, I think that the intentionality there is pretty, uh, pretty weird, pretty, pretty. Why? Up. All right. Um, why? You need to justify. No, don't just say, "Oh, it's pretty weird. It's pretty fucked up." Tell me why it's bad. Yeah. Uh, you, you asked me. I, I will. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any sense, does it? It doesn't, Max. Like, like you're not. They're, they're not involved in any of the, especially like in the original one where it was about thinking someone whilst masturbating. Like, there's literally, there's literally zero involvement from that person. There's a metaphysical person, a metaphysical image of that person in your brain. But they, if they never, if you never tell them, you know, not around anybody else. There's this, like, there's, it's not. They're not involved in the whole process. That is literally, literally invoking thought crime. It's crazy. Like the issue that I have with the whole thing, the issue that I have is that in the scenario that Riley initially stated was that the person actually cut, the, the person actually orgasms in public, right? That's where I think the line is drawn. If they're just shitting themselves in, if, the shitting themselves in public is bad, right? If they find it, if they find it sexually gratifying, but they're not like actually, there's nothing sexual. There's not like, not like an outward sexual performance going on. Then I think that it is like the issue I have with it is the shitting part, not the, not the sexual gratification part. Do you see what I mean? Do you see where I'm coming from? Well, um, I think that it's fucked up because you're uh, uh, that desire desiring children sexually. I think is inherently yeah, predatory. With some wet ass p word, p word is. But why is that not fun? Oh wait, wait, wait. What if the fact? What if they're not like trying to do it around children? What if it just happens to be a child? Yeah, if they if there's not intentionality. Um, I would probably say that they like say that I don't think that they should if they notice the kids are around, but like if they if the intentionality is not there, I wouldn't say that it's like immoral or predatory. So we need to we need to go through this. So let's so if we're saying so you're just so you are just committing to this position that if you have someone with a humiliation fetish, they go out in public, they defecate themselves in front of children. It's not like they were trying to like be in front of they just happen to be there. The, the children they, the children just happen to be there. You know, it could have been any person, but the children just happen to be there. And then as a consequence of the children seeing that person defecate and be cut like but for that sight, then that person orgasms. And you're fine with that. Can you see like the last like sentence, the last little bit? Yeah. So person, humiliation fetish, yeah, yeah. goes out in public. The only people around are children. They aren't necessarily looking to find children. Wait, the only people around are children? Yeah, the only people. Or we can say there's like, I don't know, there, there can be like a combination. It's like the I, most children. I, like I said, I think if there are children around, you should probably be careful about something like that, um, where you are actively no, getting off. But, but why? No, no, no. So, so I'm going to finish. All right. So then I'm going to finish. I think we're going to explore. All right. Then actually, you know, now we'll, you will just say, that let's just say it just happens to be that they're the only children. Around. Maybe they go to a playground. It just happens to be the nearest place by them. All right. They live right next to a playground. It's not like they actually like really, you know, want to go off in front. It's just like the kid just happened to be there and they're the only people there. So this person goes out and they're wearing their diaper or whatever and they defecate themselves and the only people around are children. And as a consequence of the children seeing them defecate, then they orgasm. You are fine with that. No, I've already said that if it's that if there's children around that you probably shouldn't do it. No, the reason that you said it was bad if children are around is because you specifically are interested in using the children. This is not the case here. I the actually, I said multiple things. Either. That's not the only thing that I said. Then what are the other reasons why it's bad to do it around children? <clears throat> I think that getting off from the gaze of children is what would be the, the, the harm there. That, 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 that their gaze is the problem because the humiliation is that children are seeing you. Um, wait, explain. Wait, hold on. Wait, what harm, what harm are you talking about? What exactly is, what yeah, is the harm? Question, what harm are you talking about? I'm talking about violating someone's categorical right to consent. Mm, can, you, can you explain to me in what way you have a consent, you have the ability to consent to things you see in public. Oh, you, keep saying, no, hold on. Stop. You, keep, you keep trying to bring it back to seeing. So I think then, again, then the way this turns, the way this is being formatted is, makes it confusing to, to try and analyse. But the issue here is that in a situation where there are no children around, and it's just in front of adults, I st as long as as long, even if you're just getting sexually gratified by people looking at you, as long as you don't out, as long as there's no outward sexual thing going on, like you know, you know, jacking off in front of people or or masturbating or coming in front of people, right? Then or orgasmic. That's the issue, right? You're shitting yourself, getting some gratification. The shit is the issue rather than sexual gratification. Then, because there's no issue with finding with finding with finding it sexually gratifying if adults are looking at you doing something that you find sexually gratifying for example whereas the issue is as soon as they become children then it becomes a moral a moral wrong because any kind of sexual interest in children whatsoever is is wrong because of you know the potential harm that can lead to children in the future because children can't consent in any way to anything even remotely sex even even in the future like even something that doesn't involve any children at all is still wrong because that continues to 
that continues to reify the idea of, of children as a sexual object in your mind, which is which is a bad thing for the potential future impact that it can have towards other towards children, right? From a utilitarian sense, that's the issue that comes about from being permissive of this, right? Whereas that so then we come back to the scenario that Riley's done here. It's like, well, you've done the shitting coming thing, or the or the shitting sexual gratification thing, right? And then it's wrong because you're shitting in front of children. And then it's also doubly wrong because you're getting sexual gratification from the presence of children, which is then the same as the, the scenario that I was talking about before, right? That's when you look at it through uh, through the lens of the you know, the overall utility of each situation um, and the harm and the material harm that can be done. That is the way I would put that, which makes the, which which is why there is a difference in my mind between the sec the sexual gratification in front of just adults and the sexual gratification when there are any children around. Do, does that make everything clear to me? You're right. It is. It is very confusing, and it's just right. And things are things being linked together in a very, uh, very what, odd way. What never this again? Back. No, this is using someone else. The scene just happens to be the way that they're using. There it. are it's multiple cases. Talking, talking they, specifically I know about that we're talking specifically. someone else for sex. That is what we're talking about. We're talking about using someone else for sex. This is just one way where you can use someone for sex in a way where it's clearly. But you're not, they're not materially using them in any way unless they are involved directly in the sex act, right? You, you can't, like, just, for example, in the first analogy, where she was talking about just masturbating, thinking about somebody, they're not involved in any of the process unless you tell them. Please sex, even though, even though they're not physically in contact. Um, I would be careful about saying it's sex itself. Um... It's a sex act. And also, wait, hold on. Let's be clear. There are ways to be able to have sex where you're not physically in contact. Like this is a sex act. If you want to try and parse the difference between well, what's a sex act. I don't act. agree with your definition of sex acts. We might have to back up to there if you want to move this conversation forward. And a no, the reason, no, hold on. the reason why okay. we're talking about this is because I'm justifying my definition of a sex act. This is what I'm doing right now. I mean, you're you're me asking me a bunch of questions. Uh, uh, you haven't justified yourself. You just want to push me into somewhere. I'm, no, because on. your because your outcome, your definition of sex would mean that this is not a sex act and there's no violation. I actually I haven't even given a definition of sex. You wait, hold on. You gave several definitions from a legal. I listed the fact that there are many ways that different legal systems and mine. I mine. I picked mine alone because there were. I mean, not because, but because I live here. But in mine alone, there were multiple different ways that that they defined sex. I was just pointing out that it's a very complex problem, and that I didn't think that your um, flattening of the complexity was very yeah, useful. And I would say it is useful because it gives us clear answers for how to be able to deal with these kinds of situations. Well, sure, you want to condemn these people, but like, I, I don't think that just wanting that itself is, is it means it's better. Wait, no, it's, I, I think, no, this has, this is the whole point of being able to show bad outcomes of different systems, all right? Right now, I'm showing you the benefit of mine, because I would say that being able to use one, use a definition of sex act, which focuses primarily on intent, is able to give us clear answers for these kinds of questions, when otherwise, if we want to go off of one that requires, for example... But also, I slightly disagree there, Fugner, in that I think that you can still make a utilitarian, you can still impugn people on utilitarian grounds, for the things that they think, right? Because you know, using thoughts as a way of rarefying uh, in, you know, internal things that they could then lead to more external harm in the long run. I think you can, even from utilitarian basis, you can still impugn people morally on that. You can't. The idea of it being, I don't know, for quote unquote criminal, for example, like codifying into law, absolutely not, right? And you're absolutely right, and thought crimes aren't a thing. But I think you can still morally impugn somebody for thinking those kind of things if you know that it leads to. If it, the if the likelihood of it leading to those external factors then happening onto somebody, um, and then when you act on them later, it's more likely if there is no pushback on the idea in on you know the thoughts happening in people's heads if if they outwardly express to you that they think those thoughts. True, truth, after yeah, absolutely, I absolutely, absolutely agree, absolutely. Agree. Then, because also, how are you going to magically div divine what is in someone's head? Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Like, it's difficult opining on something like this because any kind of idea about what people are and aren't thinking, apart from your own self internally, for each person is going to be in, is going to be you know entirely um, like fabricated because you you can't divine what somebody's thinking. It's all going to be conjecture and speculation. Well, I think they might be thinking these things. Well, how do you know? They say tell you. Like, the only thing you genuinely know is what you're thinking yourself at that time. So making any kind of moral impunity or making any kind of legal judgment on that basis is basically nonsensical. But you can still make a moral argument overall and say, I think it would it is bad morally 
do these things, but you can't ever put those into practice because, you know, people's thoughts are something you have access to. Physical contact that you cannot be able to resolve. So I think that um, even if we can say that, that um, which I don't agree, but even if we wanted to say that like your definition makes it work in this example, it actually fucks up a bunch of other examples that I think are um, um, really important. Like what? Well, because your definition of sex acts is um, about the intent and especially like primary intent, I, I think is how you said it maybe, um, uh, to elicit um, sexual desire in some way, whether for yourself or someone else, right? That's about right. Um, well, I personally, and maybe I'm a little different from everybody, that's okay. Um, but personally, I like to feel sexy. I, I, I like to feel sexy even in public. I'm not Wait, getting off in public, but I like to... I'm sorry, you said we're something? We're not talking about feeling sexy. Wait, wait, oh, can I, can I can actually, like, fully explore what I'm saying? Sure, like, I, I know that you're not talking about being sexy, or feeling sexy, whatever, but what I'm talking about is... But, no, but Riley mentioned sexual desire. Well, I'm assuming that's what Doe's moving on to by saying, well, if I'm outside feeling sexy and looking sexy, people might desire me sexually. Does them desiring me sexually constitute some kind of sex act? Well, of course it fucking doesn't, right? So Riley's point doesn't make any sense, but I'm assuming that's the point that Doe's about to make. I choose the things that I wear and how I present myself with the intent for my own sexual desire to express myself sexually and to feel it sexually. Wait, you are, no, hold on. We're not talking, we're not talking about like the intent. I'm trying to figure out, wait, hold on. So are you saying that you dress the way that you do to like get off in public? You, you keep going back to getting off. N no. Uh, We're talking I, about I, going through sexual desires. Yeah. Have you never felt something sexual without it being coming? Wait, no, or hold on, I'm gonna answer that question because this is ridiculous. Um, I'm sorry. The way that you, the way that people, but also, yeah, I have, that, that, that's exactly my position. Uh, do, you, uh, do you consider yourself a utilitarian thug now? I'm not sure, but uh, please, uh, please elaborate in the comments. People arrive at, like, orgasm is by appealing to their sexual desires. That's what you do. Um, All right? Just and the appealing doesn't usually dress, do it. You need to dress and, be a, and like, dress attractively for reasons other than trying to appeal to sexual desires or interests. Like, this is, like, the woke version of she was asking for it. I don't think it is. I absolutely I think, think that someone can express themselves sexually without them inviting someone to touch them. That's not appeal that's not appealing to sexual desires or interests. That's not the same. Thing. I think it is. If I want men to look at me in a particular way, I can dress a particular way to show that. To to, to, to cause that reaction. Wait, no, what? So wait, hold on. Is this the So you're specifically trying to dress uh, but, but, but I didn't consent to see your tits. Uh, you're, you're, no, you're gonna your, I didn't consent to see your cleavage in public. You're you're inflicting a sex a sex act upon me by appealing to my sexual desire. What fucking argument is this for Riley? This makes no fucking sense. In a particular way to get men, like in order to appeal to men's sexual desires or interests. Really anyone's, but yeah, I picked men. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I think that I can and have and probably will in the future try to dress to appeal to someone's sexual desire. I, I like feeling desired. It makes me feel good. Okay, no, then I then I would no, I would absolutely disagree with that. I think that there are plenty of other reasons why women or anybody can be able to dress in a certain way, aside from just like sexually appealing to someone else, right? Sure, I agree. That I dress the way that I do because reasons. I'm trying to like get off men, or I'm trying to like appeal to the sexual desires of women. No, like I dress the way that I do because I just like the way that I feel. I'm not trying sure. to like get off other people. Well, you keep going back to get off. Uh, I dress partially sometimes because I like the way that it feels and looks, but other times I like to to, to sort of sexualize it a little bit. I kind of I like to feel sexy. I like to have sexual desire um, um, from other people. It makes me feel good. All right, wait, hold on. Then we're talking about something completely different than what you were talking about in the example. All right? Well, you, what, you're talking about, no, what you're talking about in that instance is not that there's the... But that was, it was your example, Riley. And we're trying to now... We're trying to now create some kind of accord of the definition that you have of sexual desire is based on the analogy that you made around any kind of thing that involves sexual desire as a violation of consent or whatever to try and define a sex act. So this is entirely... I don't. This is completely pertinent to the discussion that we're having. She, oh, she's she's crazy. She's wild. She's absolutely wild. She started off so normal. She started off so normal. So I don't know what's I don't know what's going on here. Is doing something where it is not the primary reason why you're dressing that way. Where you just said you just said that it's a part of it in the hypothetical that you talked about in the tweet that we are talking about right now. You said some people like the if you go to a public event because primarily because your partner likes feet, you're not involving them in a sex act. No, yeah. we're talking about doing something primarily. Yeah, to to sex I life. primarily dress. In, on some days, if I'm at sometimes, I primarily dress on some days for sexual desire, both of myself, of looking at myself and feeling like I am a sexual being, and for what other people give to me, the sexual oh, desire. Then I, then they, I would say, no, then I would say that you're, no, I would say that you're absolutely violating other people's consent then. I, I don't understand how me wanting to feel good is, and, and, and wanting to feel like- talking about like, feeling in a sexual way. Yeah. Yeah, that's a sex act. I would absolutely call that a sex act. What, I would say that. was a sex act? What did I do that was, that was a- This is unreal. She's literally making the argument that if you like, if you have like a low cut top on, 
and people have us and you know that that make you you un, unintentionally cause people to have sexual desires about you that's somehow violating them can they them consent <laughs> what, what, what what like kool-aid is riley been drinking this makes no sense at all at all but so for, so for example the analogy that they made before that they were going to make about wearing bare feet out i wear bare feet out sometimes just because i do like because i just don't like really wearing shoes very often if i walk past someone who has a foot fetish am i committing a sexual act upon them because i've made them horny over my bare feet Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's nonsensical, isn't it? it? Doesn't make any sense. It's a sex act. Because you are doing something primarily to appeal to sexual desires or interests. Well, I I, I uh, don't think that that's true. Um, I, I I don't think that if um, I think there's a lot of other examples that we can give of um, things that are very related to sex that um, and sexuality that happen in public that do not cause harm. And I don't think you can claim that I'm causing a harm by wanting to be desired by other people and dressing for that desire. And I think that's the only way that we can claim that this is like, yes, a, like a bad. Would, yeah. In that note, yes, I would say that if you are doing something primarily, again, we're focusing on primarily here, in order to appeal to other people's sexual yeah. desires without their consent, then I would say you are harming them by violating their consent. So you think that that flattening sex, like forcing somebody, breaking somebody's consent, you think that me wearing a dress with a low cut top, look at my dress now, I could show I off my boobs a little bit and it's it would not. make other people feel a little bit good, but we wouldn't be getting off for anything. You are, you're being very particularly vague with when you say good. It's not just good generally. You're talking about good in a specifically sexual sense. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, no, I'm, I would absolutely hold by. I would absolutely hold by, especially like oh. here, because right now you're talking about very abstract. Right now you're talking about um, an example that's very removed from what you said. What you said was that you're appealing to your partner's foot fetish. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, well, I'm sorry. What's the difference there? I, I, I literally don't see it. I'm so sorry. All right, hold on. Okay. So the issue, um, I mean, we already went over it. So you're fine. You're completely fine. If you go out with your partner and your partner has a foot fetish and you go out and know that like, oh yeah, my partner has a foot fetish and because they have a foot fetish and primarily because they have a foot fetish, I'm going to dress barefoot and try to appeal to their foot fetish. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, I, and then you, and then on top of that, all right. So that's step one. Step two is you're fine with that happening in public. Uh, yeah. And so step three, you're fine with that even happening around children. Yeah. As long as there's not an intent for that. But I don't think I don't like I don't think it means a slippery slope. I think that's literally the argument that she's making. As the literally exact hundred percent like that's that is just completely what the argument that she's making. If you can dress in any way that could theoretically uh, invoke the sexual desires of others, then you are committing a sex act upon them. Which is literally the conservative thing, just like, you know, women should be modest in case they, you know, titillate the desires of men. That's just a con that's, that's literally the that's literally the argument she's making right now the children to be there and as long as that you're not like like including them like hey come touch this you know my partner's feet or like yeah as long as you're not being like weird about it yeah why does that matter um because well now you've included them in the act like you're, you're making them part of it what if they don't what if you don't like um what if they don't like touch it what if they're just like around it like they see the person getting off to the foot fetish or whatever well, well, you keep saying getting off i All right, hold on, wait, categorically you, reject then, that i want you to correct me i want you to correct me are you fine then if they get off to their foot fetish in public? are you fine with this person in this situation orgasming in public as a consequence of their foot fetish um Sing stand right now, maybe not, but, I but again, she's loading it by saying orgasm, right? We're then moving away from just the act of having your feet out around your partner who has a foot fetish, right? You're you're then you're yeah, you're, you're changing too much. The variables are both whether or not you have your feet out and whether or not you come. As soon as you orgasm in public, that's when other people start getting involved because they can see you with cum stains everywhere, right? Or they can see you, or or I guess probably hear you making screams of pleasure as orgasms rush through your body. If you're someone who cannot, you I mean, you guess you might. I guess there are people who can come from, they can squirt, whatever. Like these are things that people do get involved in because you know that is a that is a sexual thing that is that is material happening happening in this instance like somebody wearing while well, somebody not having shoes on your partner and then your the partner of that person at being aroused like not outwardly coming or orgasming but just feeling aroused in their mind that is not something that's violating other people's consent because it's just in your fucking head it's just Let's continue. I'd like to move towards a society that's a little bit freer about sex. I think I think that having so, a more comprehensive view so of sex is um, well, no, so you are actually gave a really nuanced answer there. Did you miss it? So you are. So the answer that you gave is that like you don't think it's possible, but you would like to. No, that's not the answer that I just gave. 
then I want you to give me the answer again, because my understanding of your answer was that, oh, well, probably not right now, but I'd like to move towards a society where maybe people have more open understandings of sex. The implication there being that you would like to be able to have people do that in the future. Um, I would like for sex to be destigmatized in the future to a, to a pretty significant degree um, with a broader you're understanding. Not, you're not answering the question. I, you're not answering answering question. question. I, need you to answer, I need you to answer this question, this specific question. Are you fine? Are you fine if your partner gets off to their foot fetish in public and you're the person who intentionally causes it are you fine with that happening yes or no i think the truth is that you'd have to be a little more but like the answer is really easy yes if they are clearly orgasming in front of other people right clearly that's not a good thing because then then you know by initial by by outwardly performing some kind of act, genuinely sexual thing that is can only be that is only like orgasms, orgasms and things like that only associated with only associated with sex. They are sexual by but in their very nature. Whereas having a bare feet is only sexual in the context of other people being having a foot fetish, right? Okay, so just feeling aroused in your own head by looking at somebody by their that person having bare feet. There is literally no issue at all in any way whatsoever. As soon as you start orgasming, that's where I think the line is drawn, right? Does, does, am, I, am I mad with this summary of the situation? Am I going crazy? Like, or am I read? Have I read? Have, is my does my reading of this of this analogy make some some kind of sense? Right? Surely, surely this makes sense to other people. I really hope. Or nuance about how the partner. No, 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 it was a yes or no question. Stop. You need to get a yes or a no to this question. Um, I, I don't. I didn't think I went on like Jesse Lee Peterson show today. Um, I actually like nuance and context in the answers okay. that I give. You can give all the nuance that you want after a yes or a no. I, can you not? Can you not follow my answer? If you want to ask questions, it's okay. I, I can explain anything that I say. No, because I. All right. So you asked me. All right. I'm gonna back up. You asked me why. To go back to the original thesis. So I said that this is an argument that either was intentionally being made to justify pedophilia or was negligent. But in I've been things in the analogy. The analogy was done is that in that the person who is going out with bare feet has done it intentionally because they know they will they'll, that you know you know they'll get you off to the point of orgasm right like you don't have like any kind of physical choice if it's like a reflex action, reflex action or whatever but if they are doing it intentionally because they know that will happen right that's when you know, the line gets crossed because they say well okay well I'm gonna go out with bare feet I know my partner finds that erotic and then we're gonna do it to the, then we're gonna I'm gonna continue to do it to the point at which they orgasm that's where I think the line should be being made and ends up justifying pedophilia. So based on where the conversation is right now, I would absolutely stand by that because I don't think that you can give a clear answer to say that according to your worldview, yes, you would be fine with this. Uh, yes, I have nuanced answers to questions. Um, I don't think that it's okay to do sex acts with children. And I don't think it's okay to include children in your sex acts. Do you think that it's, all right, then hold on. Then do you think it's fine because you focus a lot on physical touch? Do you think it's fine if someone gets off to, your, gets off to their foot fetish as a result of you doing it and the children are around and even see it, but do not um, touch your partner at all. It depends on how the orgasm occurs. All right, so tell me why it matters. All right, tell me, in, so tell me in which ways then you would be fine with that happening. Tell me in what kind of scenario you would be fine with your partner getting off around children and you would say that's a fine thing. Well, getting off in public with, you know, the potential for children to be around, like I said, making it intent about children is, um, is, is very, would, would make it, I think, um, morally, you know, wrong but all right and we talked I, about that before i, I don't right, really feel a nuanced answer I, I really wish you'd let me finish um you just keep not responding i saw the context of the discussion Doctor. the context of this is that there was a debate about four months ago or whatever which kind of broke like left oi twitter about kink at pride about whether we should at the main pride parade specifically not have public kink events right now i think there is nuance to this discussion I do not think that it's either bang all kink at Pride or we can just do whatever we want at the Pride Parade, right? I think people should be measured in the kind of kink they engage with at Pride events, especially public Pride events, because we want to have the space to be somewhere that is welcoming to children. I'm not really fussed about the, you know, what a, well, somebody think of the children, you know, you know, going to poison their minds or whatever. I just think that a lot of children will be feel unwelcome if... Pride is overtly a place in which a lot of kink is happening, even if it's something non-sexual, right? My, yeah, the, the it, I think it is negative utility if children are felt like they're not welcome because things are too kink-focused. 
I think that's why we can have some kind of nuance about the discussion about what kind of really is and isn't acceptable. So Riley's position is that, like, during this kind of kink up pride debate, she said that if you wear a collar that is, you know, symbolic of some kind of, like, DS relationship you have with somebody, even if it's completely innocuous, that is kink and shouldn't be allowed at pride, right? That was the, the extent to Riley's kind of incredibly, like, black and white position on this particular issue. And she was like, Anything like that should be completely banned at Pride. Completely. I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. But I think there is a line, there is a, a happy medium which we can make things better for everybody. Because obviously I understand that. It's like a lot of people talk about the people who should dress up, like the leather men who started Pride, like the gay leather men, who you know, would, like, their, yes, their kink, their fetish is wearing a lot of leather, but that's not like an inherently kind of sexual thing, just going out wearing uh, a certain kind of fetish gear. I mean, in your head, you might be feeling aroused by the idea, but you're not engaging with the people who are looking at you on any kind of sexual grounds, right? I don't think I don't really care. Like, may like, like public whippings and stuff. Like, maybe that's across the line, maybe. But like, the, the, to the point at which Riley was saying that people, you know, wearing like leather fetish gear should be banned. People wearing collars should be banned. That's just like an absurd position for her to hold. Yes, she thinks a BDSM collar should be, should be banned at Pride events. That is literally what she was saying. Absolutely wild. ...based on what we already talked about. I, you keep, you keep, I feel like you keep trying to avoid answering the questions, so I keep trying to pull you back so we stay on... Well, it sounds like you're trying to get a clip, um, because you don't actually want to, like, discuss the nuance of this. No, I am discussing nuance. I think that you're, you're really not. You literally just said, give me a yes or no answer. No, I don't like your nuance answer. Give me a yes or no answer. Are you serious? No, nuance, no, hold on. <laughs> nuance is not the same as refusing to give a yes or a no. You can give all the nuance that you want and also give a clear yes or a no. Sometimes it's not just a yes or a no. Sometimes you have to make a nuanced case for sometimes yes and sometimes no. There are some people who have like, um, who have like premature ejaculations. They'll even do it like in public without touching or anything like that. They don't mean to. It's not like, you know, uh, but it still occurs. Um, I think that people can orgasm in public in ways that aren't very like, um, harmful, um, but I think that there are ways that are harmful. Okay, so I want to give you another scenario based on what you've already said, and I want you to tell me if it is or if it is not harmful. Okay. Uh, I think we've walked through enough of these examples. I don't really know what else you're trying to get out of this. I, no, I'm trying to I test feel like problem. we really, really have. I mean, yeah, of course you're trying to test me. You've tested me like five times now, and I've been pretty consistent. Uh, no, um, you have not been consistent. I can't even get a baseline level of what your views are. Uh, really? You've not given a clear answer to any, like almost any of the questions I've asked. So I just want to. I'm trying to ask questions to figure out what your values are. So I'm going to give you another example based on what you have already said to see what your response is, so I can help figure out what your values are. Okay, okay that sounds really cool. We haven't done this oh. yet, I'd really like to. Okay, so let's say that you have the person from the example that you tweeted about, yeah. your partner, foot fetish, you go out with your partner, you know that your partner has a foot fetish, you intentionally and primarily do not wear shoes in order to appeal to your partner's foot fetish. There are children around. You do not care that there are children around, but there are children around. Your partner, who also does not necessarily care if there are children around, ends up getting off orgasming as a consequence of you specifically appealing to their foot fetish. Do you think that there is any harm incurred to the children, even though they were not, that was not necessarily intentionally a part of the situation? Yes or no? From the way you've described that, no, I don't believe the harm was done to those children. Okay. See, so that's where I, that's where I disagree. That's I think where I, I agree with Riley here because you know you you literally come in front of kids. Like I think that's bad. I think that them seeing you, you know going for processes that is overtly sexual, I think that is something that should happen. And I, but I also think that there's, there's a big en enough nuance that you can say, well, at the main Pride Parade, maybe we should put a downer on, maybe we should have be a little bit more reserved in what we do on an outward facing thing, right, to make it more inclusive. But there's like a billion other pride events, and those are all should be sexy as fuck, right? They should all have like maximum kink because these are places where kids can't even go anyway because it's all like alcohol places, right? Alcohol places, bars. That's what you call alcohol places. So, like, there's just like the main pride parade, which should be kind of inclusive, where we should be a little bit more moderating in what we do and say and the kind of things that we engage in. But outside of that, it's nonsense. Like, and even then, my line for what constitutes something that shouldn't happen in front of children is pretty broad. Like, that's true. But I mean, she's the problem is Riley. She's been kind of brain poisoned by watching too much Destiny, where Destiny all all Destiny speaks in is just like random obscure analogies. I think in this last analogy that she's made, I think is the only time where I've actually agreed with her, and that I think that she think I think that she thinks that it is wrong to deliberately go out to make your partner orgasms, which they do 
physically and obviously in front of children. I do think that's bad. But I think this is the only analogy that she has put forward thus far, which at least puts forward any kind of material harm uh, with regards to what's happening. So now we're at the issue. Thank you. So this is why I would reject your framing of this, because I would say that doing that violates categorically the consent of the children and therefore causes them harm. That is my issue with what, what, you, are, that's my issue with what you are proposing. What consent did you violate? Because you engage in sexual acts around children by engaging in incredibly risky behavior without getting their consent. That's not, you haven't described a harm. Yes, I have. All right, let me give you an example of this. Well, no, you actually, let me give you an example of this. Um, so okay. I went through some pretty extreme child sexual assault. I was uh, sold to other people for sex. There were okay. people. Never, I think that's bad too, but never heard of anyone ever doing that ever. So it's a pointless analogy. It doesn't help. A point. It's a bizarre scenario that's never happened. Like, yeah, I agree. That's I. I, I would agree that it's such a like, it's such a wild like hypothetical that doesn't really cut to the meat of the issue. But the fact that they have some kind of uh, like axiomatic disagreement on this particular issue here, I think, is some is a is a com there's merit to having that conversation in which we where we. If we're having a conversation about what consent is, what constitutes a sex act, what constitutes a sex act, and what what um that a rap that is immoral to do in front of children, but not immoral to do when there aren't any children, but it's just in front of adults. I think using this particular analogy to try and square that circle, I think there's some merit to that, just so that we have a proper accord about what each party thinks about ideas of consent, uh, ideas of you know. Uh, involving children in sex acts and some kind of general consensus about what constitutes a um a sex act. I think this is fine, but it's not it's not a good like rhetorical device to try and get to the meat of the argument rather than just to define the terms in the first place. What are we on? Forty four. Yeah, let's get back to twenty seven. Describe a harm. Yes, I have. All right, let me give you an example of this. Well, no, you actually, let me give you an example of this. Um, so. Okay. I went through some pretty extreme child sexual assault. I was okay. sold to other people for sex. There were okay. people who looked at me and desired me sexually. Okay. And there is a very big difference from the guy who was looking at me and desiring me sexually and the guy who just paid to fuck my bleeding holes and then sticking his fingers down my throat so I'll puke for him so he can make me eat it before he shoots his load into my ass, okay? There's a very big difference between the desire of the first person and the actual act of the second person. These are fundamentally different. My consent wasn't broken when someone was looking at me, you know, with desire. That's not where that came from. All right. I am sorry that happened to you. That is awful. That does not have to do with this conversation. It absolutely does, because your definition of sex acts includes the man who was looking at me, wanting to buy me, but not doing it. Um, I think that we're about to be TOS, but let me be clear, all right? Everything that you just said does not have to do with the scenario that we just talked about. It has to do with your definition of sex acts. Your so definition of sex acts fundamentally fails. It includes people who wear crop tops, it includes people who wear high no, heels to make their ass look no, good, and it includes no, the man who looked at me, desiring me. Did he get off to you? No, not that one. Was he trying to? <laughs> no, he was deciding which one of us he wanted to fuck. Then I would say that that's not a sex act. Why? He, he desired me sexually. If he was not doing something. He acting. was desiring me. Isn't, 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 isn't that the problem here? Wait, because... so hold on. So actually, wait. So... Do you want this person, do you, I'm trying to understand the issue here, and I can tell that this is a very, like, we don't have to talk about this, this is a sensitive subject. Yeah, it's why I was really, really upset when you called me a pedophile. I didn't call you a pedophile. Yeah, I know, you're going to keep maintaining that, we haven't gotten to that part of the discussion yet. No, we actually have. Do you have any other examples of me calling you a pedophile? When you say that someone is intentionally or negligently justifying pedophilia, what you're saying is they have made an argument that they think that sex acts with children are okay, whether they know it or not. Your audience calls me a pedophile no, I, without no, your pretty uh, worrying around it because they no, heard no, your no, message. No, they heard the message no, that you were sending no, out. They no, heard it. No, they heard no, it loud no, and clear. They heard no, it every time you called. No, All of those people, words. yeah, no, they no. totally did. And they get it. They absolutely, gonna, they no, absolutely no, understood. No, your no, audience no, picked it up. Did you not, did you no, not understand? No, right, Do you want to go see, you want to go look at my replies and find how many people call me a pedophile without all your fun words around it? 
They are yeah. people calling it a pedo in your chat. Yes, in people in your chat are second. literally saying that. We're going to get back to having a productive conversation. Yeah, right? I think I think we, do, we can get back to having a productive conversation. I think the conversation is about whether or not that guy was who was looking at me, ready to I buy did. me, ready to buy my holes. I, I want to know whether or not that was a sex act. Was it a sex act when he wanted to buy my holes? Do what pedophiles want, or you negligently did. That is what I argued. And yes. that is what I maintain. Yes, you argued that I have a belief earlier. that justifies having sex with children. I never claimed that. I have right, only said that it is okay wrong. to do things in public that uh, 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 deal with sexual desire. You understand what negligence means? Yes, unintentionally. Okay. So but what Just you're saying is I have a belief, whether or not I know it, that I, I did it, whether or not I meant to. You're saying that I said it's okay to have sex with children, Stop. whether or not I no. know it. That's what you said. Stop. You That's said that about me. You know that, Stop. right? Stop. Those no. are the words Stop. that you said you're about me. words in my mouth. I you didn't put words intentionally want. or no. negligently. Those Stop. are what those words mean. No, no. Stop. Anyone can see that. That's yeah, no, Joe's completely right here. Like, saying someone is premised for paedophilia is essentially telling them that they think that it's okay. Which, and I think that the difference between, uh, from a kind of, from an ideological sense between somebody who thinks that paedophilia is okay and someone who wants to perform paedophilia because they think it's okay. I don't think that line, like, who wants to, but whether they engage in the act or not is, is by the by, because we're just talking about, like, the ideological basis here. I don't think there's any, like, fundamental difference between those two positions like from, from and i think that if you accuse somebody of the first you are kind of by proxy accusing them of the second so i think doe's argument here is merit well, apart from all the other stuff which i didn't really want to hear but you know left into the conversation that's what those words mean no and your audience heard the oh, message on, your audience again. heard the message because again. they call me yet all right yelling does not make you more right all right. You've been yelling multiple yelling times in this conversation. It was right. only when I brought up an intense, traumatic event of mine that I am now. Or you say something <laughs> and you are not aware of its implications at the time that you do it. Yeah. So you, but you think. you still do cause harm. You think right? that I. I'm going to unmute you. Oh my God, you muted You're me. Stop saying. Oh my God. This is holding me. you a pedophile. Oh my God. Because it is not. That's so embarrassing. I can't right. believe you muted me. That's incredibly embarrassing. Because oh my you were God. Yelling. No, hold on. You were yelling. And you are trying to put words in my mouth, all right? So I am justified to be able to do that. Keep saying that I said a thing when I didn't. We you looked said, at the clip. We looked at the said clip. That yes. I intentionally or negligently justified pedophilia. That means that either I meant to say that it's okay to have sex with children, or I unintentionally hold the belief or made an no. argument that that justifies, made an argument that would allude to the belief that having sex with children is okay. Now hold on, stop. All right, it's not just. There is a possibility, because I can't read your mind, I don't know what's in your head, but the total scope of possibilities means that either you didn't know what you were saying when you said this, or, conversely, that you didn't know. Yeah. And yeah. I stand by that, because if you So you're saying that know, I made an argument without knowing it part, that says it's okay to have earlier, sex with children. You're fine. No, hold on. You are fine with people, you admitted, you're fine with people being able to get off in front of children, at least in some scenarios. You're fine with that. Get off in public with the understanding that children might be there. But that actually wasn't why you called me a pedophile. The reason you called me a I pedophile. I didn't call you a pedophile. You just admitted. I just admitted, you just you admitted I that intentionally... there are scenarios where you're fine with people getting off around children in public. I do not think it is a. But now Riley's actually calling her a pedophile, regardless of whether or not, like she was originally calling them. Uh, sorry, it's uh, those. It's pronouns. Sorry, I think I've mentioned them a couple of times today. They think that it does that. That it is one. It is one already. Which like that's the argument that, that she's just made right there. stretch to say that you either negligently or intentionally made arguments that would also be made by pedophiles. No, none of my arguments were made by pedophiles. You are not listening to me. I, I am listening to you. I heard every word you said. Do you want to repeat it back to you word for word? Yes, please repeat back to me exactly what I said. Yeah, maybe I, I can't do word for word, but you did say that that I that, that your belief in its negligence. Uh, uh, oh, I read something and I lost it. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. So you did. You agreed. Just now you've agreed multiple times, actually, that you are fine with certain situations where someone engages in a sexual act, gets off mm, publicly around act. children. We're, we're, you are you, no, fine. You keep saying. You are, no, no, stop, stop, stop. You, are, you, you agree that there are situations where you are fine with that happening. I'm fine with people getting off in public sometimes, yes. Even if it is around children. As long as they're not including the children in it, yes. Okay, so I don't think that my comment was out of line at all. Well, you're implying that I think it's okay to involve children in sex acts. No, I didn't. Oh, uh, sounds like pedo apology to me. Look at your chat, look at them all doing it. They, they hear your message. Um, well, right now, what you're saying is incredibly icy. Yeah, Because you are justifying being able to get off in front of children. I'm justifying getting off in public. I'm not justifying getting off with the person as, 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 the, as the intent. Sometimes, and you are fine with scenarios where people get off in public and also in front of children. 
Yes. As long as they're not including the children in the sex act. We want to go to the con all right, we talked about the concept of risk earlier or risky behavior. Can we go back to that? Because this would be when we're talking no, about- No, because we still haven't gotten past your, your failure of a definition. You I, can't mm, fundamentally tell me I think that, that I, my I, consent I, was broken I, I, and I that man desired me. Time. You can't tell I me that. It does not time. cover that. That's not a sex act. The man looked at me. He wanted to Are purchase you bringing up me. your personal experience? Yes, sorry because my personal experience up, is important here personal... because you clearly don't have the actual- no, 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 uh, 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 I know what you're doing. Oh my God, you muted me again. She muted me again. You're personal experience as a drama victim to try and to try and paint me in a bad light. I know what you are doing. All right. Yeah. Do not lie to me or the chat. I know what you're doing. I know you're poisoning the well. Poisoning right? the well? This does not matter oh when we're talking about the specific scenarios of the subject here. What you tweeted, which is what we are talking about. All right? So stop poisoning the well and keep on the discussion that you agreed to have. All right? Am I unmuted? unmuted? Am I unmuted? You're unmuted. I think it's really... um. Embarrassing that you keep muting. I've muted you once. I, I think that's really embarrassing. But embarrassing more than that. Because yeah, because it is embarrassing. Because you have to, you have to like. Embarrassing does not make it embarrassing. I hate to be the one to tell you. Oh my god, no, you're right. Oh my god, I'm not the arbiter of ultimate embarrassment. Oh my god, I've just now come to this realization. My life's a lie. I'm going to be in shambles now. So you asked earlier, what's the harm of getting off around children? And I will justify that to you right now. No, I want you to justify your your belief of a uh, desire being a sex act. I've given a very clear example in where desire wasn't a sex act. Uh, uh, sexual desire wasn't itself a sex act. I'd like to, I'd like you to actually defend your claim because you haven't yet. Because they have, no, hold on, because um, we're talking about if you're doing something primarily appealing to sexual desires or interests. Yes, the man who was looking at me to purchase me was in fact looking at me with right, pure intense sexual desire. That is not primarily, no, hold on, no. You don't stop. think that's primarily about sexual desire? The guy who no, was about, doing, to, no. about to buy my holes? All right, so hold on. So you are, right, you're literally engaging. You're trying to poison, I know what you're doing. This isn't so poisoning the well. I'm going, to I'm going to respond to you, all right? I'm going to respond to you, but I know everyone can tell exactly what you're trying to do, okay? So I'm going to respond to you. Am I unmuted? I'm unmuting you right now. Oh, it's Riley Stream. It's fine for her to mute the pedo apologist. I still I'm think it's, when it's... you're in I'm muting you. You know when I'm muting you. Don't lie. Hey, I don't know. It doesn't show me. All right. How am I supposed so to I know? Say, Wait, you just said that and you're going to just move on? You're going to say that and you're just going to move on? No, 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 I'm responding to what you said. Yeah, you I said something that was a lie, and, and then you're not going to acknowledge I, that it wasn't true, and now you're just trying to move on. I can't I, no, see no, when no, you need no, me. I would respond to you. You're asking me to respond to an incredibly inflammatory uh, hypothetical. I'm asking theory. you to, to respond I'm going to, to my personal experience because it is the ultimate counter to your poor definition. No, it's not the ultimate counter. I'm about to explain why. Also, can you please give a trigger warning? People in my chat are asking that you give a trigger warning before you talk about. No, I don't think so. You didn't give me a trigger warning when you called me a pedophile. I didn't call you a pedophile. You did. No, I didn't. You we did. already went over it. Yeah, Stop I was right. No. No. Absolutely. Yeah, even if she didn't call, if she if she called a pedophile. Before, even if she didn't, she's already called her a pedophile in this conversation, or at least permissive of pedophilia. Like it's it's uh, like the, the, that that splitting that hair does not make that any less absurd or ridiculous or inflammatory, right? I think there was every single right to push back on this in such in the way that in way that it did. I was the one who invoked sexual abuse thought experiment. She was the one who would have made the trigger warning. Yep, hundred percent, absolutely correct, Parker. Hundred percent correct. Yep. Absolutely not. Yeah. I reject that. Do you have any other? All right, hold on. You said multiple times. Is there any other time aside from this? Because here, I would reject that I ever called you a pedophile. I would reject that one hundred percent. You said I called you a pedophile multiple times. Are there any other times where that possibly happened? You deleted all your tweets. Don't you remember? I didn't. I never tweeted calling you a pedophile. Mm, okay. So you're just calling me a liar then. Uh, no, I said at the very beginning of this debate that neither of us can prove that claim because you hit all the evidence, so it's I didn't hide all the evidence, I did it because you and your community were harassing me. Uh, sure. We were talking about things that you said publicly as a public figure, that is... I never... Do you have any screen... Or do you have any screen cap? If I deleted a tweet, then I could have had it... There, your are there girlfriend tweeted, tweeted, and it seemed yeah, to be in line with things that you yeah, believed. Yeah. Because you I made the exact same argument as you about how uh, how desiring a foot fetish, uh, desiring feet with a foot fetish is itself a sex act, and then she said some like legal stuff, and then she got put on bad legal You don't have any actual evidence that we call you a pedophile once. Uh, you did it multiple times, but um. No, I didn't. I didn't. You never provided any okay. evidence. Okay. I can't. Like I already said, I can't prove that you tweeted those things. It's fine. We can move on from it. I know no, no, you did you it. Lied you then. deleted you your tweet. You lied. Then you, why are you trying? Why are you trying to prove something that you don't even know is true? Well, I know that it happened because it happened to me. And beyond wait, that, wait, I don't need those tweets here because your video. Right, is wait, enough. How is that any different? Hold on, we need to go through that point because there's. This is like tantamount to gaslighting from Riley here. This is this is awful. This is horrendous behavior. How does she still have fans and followers? I guess it's political twitch, like. You know, I don't know why I'm asking that question. Moving on. There's a massive issue there. So you're saying that what you're saying it's true that I called you a pedophile multiple times because it happened to you. That is your evidence, right? No, I'm telling you that I, I can't provide evidence. I said that at the no, very beginning saying, of the discussion, and I can't do you it are now. Saying, you're saying that it, you're saying that it's true that I called you a pedophile multiple times because it happened to you, and you know it to be true. Well, that's what it you're providing. To me. No, I know it happened. 
it happened to me. I know I it can't didn't prove happen. it. There's no I know evidence it because you deleted it all. I know it okay. didn't happen. Okay. And like I said, neither of us can move forward on that. I've said that more than once. It's fine. But you did lie about me. I didn't lie. The same with you had any proof that you were telling the truth? Yes, the video is the proof. No, it's not. If you say that someone is intentionally or unintentionally defending pedophilia, what you're saying is that they either I'm saying you, don't, you may have not intentionally said, defended pedophilia. I know that it's not all intentional. Every time I've said this, I've done both parts of it. You are either saying that I I, I know that, that I, I am actively aware that I am presenting something. If that I say, says, can I, if say, I actually, say, finish my sentence? If I, no, you're not responding to me. If I, I say, say, I am responding to you. I'm saying intentionally or unintentionally. One of them is that I knowingly am justifying having sex with children. And the other one, and is, the other one. is saying that I don't know that I'm saying that it's okay to have sex with children. Neither yeah, of those are what I've that, done. I yeah, think it is what okay about to, that second one there? Yes. Where you, where you don't think that I am. Make that meaning. You think that I am. I, I unknowingly support sex with children, even though I yes, more I than once said that sex with children is wrong. I think that you said that in this clip. I think that is the plain reading of this. I was specifically talking about what you said here. You're talking about the foot fetish example. Yes, where yeah. you end up conceding that you are fine with scenarios where someone gets off sexually to a foot fetish. I never said gets children. off. I've said gets off in this conversation, but I didn't say it in that initial one. But even if I did say get Wait, off. Wait, hold on. You are, saying, you, are, you are saying that according to this clip and the beliefs that you elicited in this clip, that you are fine with scenarios where people get off to their foot fetish sexually in public around children. In the clip, I said that it was okay to present your desires in public, to do things yeah. in public that elicit sexual desire. In this no, conversation, no, 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 I've maintained said, that I don't think it breaks consent to um, to orgasm in public as long as as long as you don't involve the children around. Okay, and now, because we've gotten to this point several times, we keep trying to pivot away, I want to explain why that is wrong. All right, we keep pivoting away. I want to explain why doing a sex act around children, even if you do not involve them, is still harmful. When a kid walks in on their parents, did their parents involve them in a sex act? So, no. What? Why not? No. They could solve them having sex. Because you're not... No, because you're engaged, because they were acting in private. They act. They took reasonable steps to act in private. And so oh. I'm going to... All right, I'm going to mute you for a second. I want to explain why it is bad to do... I, um... I've deafened myself and muted my microphone on her end because um, if she's going to keep muting me, I have no obligation to continue to sit there and listen to her. I think that's more than fair. She's muted me multiple times. This is the only time I've done it. I can't hear anything she's saying. I think, she, yeah, so. <clears throat> I think this is more than fair. I'll see how long it takes her to notice or care. 100% fair. 100% agree. What are you guys doing? I haven't read any of the chat. Like, I still agree. I actually still agree with, you know, Riley in this crazy hypothetical that she's dreamt up. I still agree with the idea that you sh that I think that it is bad to orgasm in public with children around, even if you do not intend them to, even if you do not intend them to be there, um, as long as the intent was to make them orgasm in the first place, right? Um, and the impact of that action is, is like, I think the impact of, of the action of orgasming in front of children, regardless of whether you want to or not, without any intention to do so, I still think is I still think is bad. I still I still think that is the one thing that Riley has said that could theoretically be constituted as being morally wrong. But she again, you're absolutely right. Is in that the the kind of the the logic circle that you have to get to that incredibly niche situation. Uh, it's it's not relevant to be able to create a proper de kind of debate platform like a debate point about. Again, I'm, I meant my words there. I don't know why I'm a fucking streamer, but yes. <laughs> Again, that's the the one point that Riley has made so far that I think is cogent in regards to a moral philosophy. I mean, obviously, masturbating probably absolutely definitely wrong, but but the masturbating is a sex act, and is and is universally recognised as a sex act, and the same with an orgasm, right? How are you guys doing? <clears throat> you guys think I'm doing okay? I've been trying my hardest. My hands are like sweaty. I got anxiety talking about my trauma. It, my adrenaline started pumping. I shouldn't have gotten um, as loud as I did. Oh, I... Anybody? Well, you didn't listen to anything I said, but I just Oh, sorry, why. you muted me. I, it's, I, I only got it here. Because you were not in actually engaging with what I was saying. All right. I'm I trying feel to explain like I'm you said, with you've said. You said no, stop. You didn't. Okay. You said that there's no harm from doing sex acts around children, and I've tried repeatedly. Okay, so in the in the in this this go back going back to Riley's theoretical, I think the person who is morally at fault there is the person who has gone out with the intention of getting you to orgasm and then has done so with the act that they've done in that instance. The person who orgasms is not kind not really the person at fault because it was involuntary. It's completely involuntary, but the person who they're with, whatever act they've done, obviously Riley's hypothetical about the wearing the foot fetish, blah, 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 whatever, right? 
If you then deliberately go out with the intent to cause someone to orgasm in public around children, that makes you the one who I can morally imprune, not the person who is actually orgasming at the time because it's a reflex action that they have no control over. And you said it is, you know, it can, it can happen sometimes, right? For sure, for sure. Especially if you, especially if you have a, um, you know, an AFAB reproductive system, right? Multiple times to explain why it is harmful. I just explained that to my chat and I tried to explain it to you and you specifically avoided listening to me, which suggests to me that you are not actually engaging with me in good faith. You, you, you are avoiding engaging That was the first time I muted you. I, I just find it really um, unfair that you keep muting me. Uh, maybe unfair sounds a little whiny, but like... I. I've, I feel like I will, I've treated you with pretty good faith here. I've answered every question directly. I, no. I've, I've tried my hardest to be um, honest and good faith and even, you know, no. answer questions that I know you're you are, you are trying to make sound as intentionally bad as possible. I, I don't no, know. Yeah. Not. No, you are. No, and then you mute me. Absolutely when I, yeah, not. no, absolutely. I think, you're, I think it's absolutely what you've done. You keep saying I'm poisoning the well by talking about my own personal literal experience that actually has to do with actual pedophilia. Um, that's apparently that's not right. actually like important to you as someone who's like really worried about CSA victims, right? Oh, man. All right. No, clearly when you say that, you know you are poisoning the well. It's not poisoning the well. I, I agree that what happened to you was horrible. I'm sorry that it happened. You know you are poisoning the well. It's not poisoning the well. It's talking about my personal experiences. Poison the well would be like, Riley is such a dumb Christian. She'll never be able to understand what I'm saying. Like, no, like, I'm not poisoning the well. I'm talking about an experience because I don't feel like you're adequately um, able to uh, uh, engage with the actual experiences of people who have gone through really, and I'm really you, horrible exactly things. The problems. And I'm telling you exactly the problems. And I also was going to explain, all right, so hold on. So if you want to go back to exactly the reason why that person in the scenario was not engaging in a sex act, I would say that it was not because they were primarily um, trying to um, pursue a sexual desire interest at that time. That would be oh, that person you're The answer is yes, that there was a pedo if it thinks it's okay to orgasm in the presence of children. You know that was All actually right. like the norm that like people would fucking like no, hold on. Rooms. Don't try to impute. No, that hold on. Used to be the norm. I'm not imputing it. I'm just telling you, I just want you to hear like what your audience says. I'm reading it all. I, I know what your audience says. I, I just wish All you right. would read your audience. Right, but actually engage with what I'm saying because I'm responding to you. I would say that the person in your scenario, for as inflammatory as make it out to be, I would say I don't understand what poisoning the well fallacy means, by the way. Riley's trying to say Doe is making appeal to emotional fallacy or appeal to a personal experience fallacy. Yes, exactly. 100 percent 100 percent Like I genuinely think that. She thinks that it's an appeal to motion fallacy, where Doe is what what Doe is actually trying to do is um, actually find a real world situation to apply Riley's logic to, to try and you know decipher what the meaning of the conversation is, rather than dealing in vague hypotheticals that are like so far removed from any actual real life situations. So by invoking some real life situation, which is, is easy to invoke when you have personal experience of it. Rather than using the person experience to be the defining factor, but the actual act itself in place of a hypothetical is what's happening here. To be able to discuss around what what the what to try and find an accord between the two of them about what the definition of a sex act is, the definition of a sexual desire, the definition of consent. Because the original reason why Riley was introducing all of these hypotheticals was so they could have a joint definition of sex act, sex to sexual desire and consent. And then Doa said well, these hypotheticals are meaningless. Let's bring this back to a real world idea and then we can use this together to try and get some kind of accord on these definitions. And we still have a fucking definition because Riley's trying to accuse, or accuse though of poisoning the well, which it's not. It just isn't. Like, that's <laughs> what poisoning the well is. You're absolutely right, Dagno. Yes, correct, yeah. Riley, I mean, Riley fails in understanding many things say that the distinguishing factor there is that they were not primarily... For as in, like I was sold to other people and you're calling me inflammatory? So, yes, I mean right now. Uh, hold on. You keep saying that. You keep repeating this. You keep repeating the fact that you are that you don't are. Don't lose that. It's fine. In front of kids. That's not what I said. Hey, Chatter Toddsworth. That's not what I said. Sorry, I just wanted to let that. That's not what I said. You know. Hold on. So to be clear, the example that you gave, I would distinguish and say that the reason why that does not apply is because that person, we can reasonably surmise, was not primarily engaging in a sexual act at that time. They were looking at me to buy me. And all right, and you are, and I know that you are trying to just be as overly inflammatory as this possible. Is not and I would say, I would say that in that situation, the thing they are primarily focusing on was the buying. That's what my answer would be. And I know that you're just going to respond with, oh my God, Riley, you're so terrible. I left. <laughs> the guy, the guy who wanted to buy my holes. The main thing he was thinking about was the buying. I left, to be really clear, I left. I, I don't want anyone to be confused. I ended that conversation. Whew, okay, hold on, I need a quick second. <laughs> just like any old financial transaction, just looking to buy something, it's just like, it's just like buying, you know, a, a, a new tea set, like some antique china, or, you know, paying $300 to debate Demon Mama. Yeah, I mean, it, it, absolutely, should, it absolutely should have 
doped out of there sooner. I would have ejected myself way before when Riley was clearly refusing to engage in, in, in good faith and the continuous muting. But the way in which Riley has interacted with this is utterly irreprehensible. Fuck me. It was just transaction. It was just a little, was a little business purchase. <laughs> so, I have to laugh. I have to laugh. I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's really not funny. It's it's awful. But I'm like kind of laughing as a kind of reflex action to stop myself from being like from, to like actually you know do my job as a streamer and actually talk about the things that are going on on stream. I can't, really, I can't really watch that. Um, I'll let you guys watch it. So I'm just going to put it up here for the moment. And then... Okay, I'm crying and on stream. I'm crying things... That was so fucked up. I can't believe she said okay. that. Right. Well, we're good, we're good. Oh. <laughs> That's insane. I can't believe her. I legitimately... I didn't think she would say that. You effing with some wet-ass P-word. P-word is female genitalia. Yes, a writing sex chat. She thinks that buying someone's holes, looking at them with desire, <clears throat> because you're about to buy them, to fuck them, is a business transaction. That's crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, you effing with some wet ass p word. P word is female genitalia. Did someone someone clipped that part, right? Someone clipped her saying that, right? I, I'm just gonna hold on to that like for the rest of my life. Oh my god! Someone put it on Twitter immediately. That's what, that was the, that was the first clip that I saw. That like I I, I was she like, this is so fucked up. Well, I guess you've watched on stream. With some ass p word, p word is female genitalia. That's incredible. I'm honestly kind of... Yes, yes, hunger master. Did Riley try to downplay the fact that you were sex trafficked by implying that the person who was trying to buy you wasn't doing it with sexual intent? Yes. They said that the primary thing there was, was that they were doing a transaction. They were buying. That was the primary thing. Oh, God. <laughs> you want gotcha for clip? No. Oh, my God. I went through so much shit. Of course I didn't want gotcha clip for Twitter. Oh, fuck. Everything? I think that's most... I think there's, there's any more debate after this. I really hope there's not after that. Like, it's difficult to follow that up. Like, it's difficult to follow that up with any Protestant like, commentary. She said that like, I was trying to... How do I, co like, how do I comment on something like that? I want to try and, you know, put something forward so the people, the, 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 all six people in my chat, but I just speechless. Completely speechless. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think, I, I think there is like, yeah, all right, Rob, how are you doing? Like, I think there's a reasonable discussion to be had. About the you know the what the issues of what constitutes you know constitutes consent, what constitutes a sex act, uh, what constitutes involving someone in a sex act, etc. Hey, thank you for the thank you for the follow, that that's much appreciated. Um, like there's merit to be had about trying to define these positions and then using that to create a moral framework for you know how what con what how what constitutes violating somebody's consent, right? Or what and what violation would be mor morally impunable. Right, sometimes you can violate people's consent in incredibly minor ways that you couldn't morally impugn someone on. But if we found some kind of accord from a discussion like this, where we understood where that line was, where you could morally impugn someone for you know breaching other people's consent, then sure, then maybe then that's a good conversation to be had. But Riley just wasn't interested in having that conversation. You just try. She was just trying to get got yous and make and make Doe look bad, essentially, for our, the vast majority of the debate. Debate. 
Anyway, after this conversation, um, Riley talked with Bosch, which well, I guess we'll watch now as well because if we're gonna like, subject ourselves for a bunch of Bosch stuff, to a bunch of Riley stuff, we should at least have the bit that follows what just happened here. Let's bring that up. Um, and find where that is. Oh, oh no, he put it on his main channel, didn't he? I was gonna go to the live stream, but let me go to the the main video. Wait, with RGR begins. Here, yeah. go through this one. Get that full screen. We'll be unmuted. We'll have it in full definition at one point five times speed. Have a look. Good. Go. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you just fine. So the debate was between you and Doe. I don't want to rehash its entirety here, but you had thoughts to share, and uh, Doe consented to your presence without it. So uh, I'm happy to hear you out for a time. Uh, what do you have on your mind? Yeah, no problem. And thank you for having me on. Um, I guess I want to address some of the things because I don't feel, um, I guess I like the main thing right now for me is that I feel like people are not listening to what I'm saying or engaging with what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I feel really hurt by the fact that I feel like people are not listening to me, despite the fact that I am genuinely, regardless of whether or not you believe me, um, trying to the best of my ability to engage with you or the perspectives of people who disagree with me. Um, so I want to go through like a couple of points to begin with and just like, um, like I know that you said I was hardcore logical tunneling. Um, I know that that's something that you- Well, I think, um, you, have, I think you have lawyer brain, at least selectively. Um, well, with certain degrees of specificity, but it didn't last very long in the conversation, I don't think. Well, the reason, I'm very particular with my wording, right? I try to be very particular. I try to think through my positions. And I try to think through the outcomes of my different positions. And so the reason why I stick to very particular wording is because it is important for the purposes of the, the fundamental issue in this conversation. So in this conversation, the thing that we started with was the question of, did I ever call Doe a pedophile? That was the bottom line question of the debate. Right. Yes, though I don't think it is anymore, because I think most people would argue that at this point you've now done worse things than call it a pedophile, uh, it, sort of, um, very directly, um, well, I and, wanna... and that's just sort of like the initiating concern. Now. Can we talk through some of that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, I want to begin with kind of the end of it and then build back, if that's fine, with Let's the very, change... the, the personal comments. Let's change the scene here so that my camera and chat don't get in the way of yeah, I think this is this is a better this is a better sort a better scene. Plus, we've got Vorsch's cam on the top right. Um, towards the end with Doe. So when Doe said that, and I was told that this was a possibility beforehand, I was reasonably suspicious that Doe would bring up their past experience as a trauma victim, right? And that is like everything that happened to them. In respect to that is horrible and awful and i do not disagree with that right the problem is whether or not it was relevant to the conversation that we were having and i think that it caught me by surprise so i think to an extent like the answer i gave makes sense but i reflected on it more with my chat and the reason why it was not relevant and this is why i would say it's more so poisoning the well that it didn't actually have to do with the conversation is because the person the thing that Doe was describing like the person in that situation was not doing an action, right? They were standing and they were contemplating. But for me, I do not punish. I would not just say that a sex act is just thinking. And we can get into this if we want to, because this is something that I've, and this is a big reason why I arrive at my position, right? But like when we try to conceive of what exactly a sex act is, I think that the best definition that we can arrive at is when we are, when someone is doing something with the specific intention of primarily appealing to a sexual desire or taste. I think that that is the best definition, and that's what a lot of the debate was sort of about defending, right? Right. And, well, know, a couple of things. But, and so, well, and so, and then, I'll, and then you can talk. But so here, the person who they were describing was not—I I would say—they weren't doing an action, right? But the point being that, like, but but the, so so here, um, the main issue is that I just want to know what an alternative definition is to sexual act. That's not what I'm proposing. That doesn't otherwise lead to really bad outcomes. I think Doe's whole point is that your insistence on reducing all sexual actions down to a single all-encompassing term is unhelpful. 
why has Riley started now started caring about about sets of outcomes rather than appealing to deontology? I don't, why? How is this? Why is her? You know, the moral framework of what's going. Why has this changed? Why has this suddenly changed? I don't get it. That's the reason why it brought that up to begin with. Your definition of sex act includes dressing for the club if you're looking to arouse people with your fat pits, and That's doesn't include and doesn't include leering at a child who you may or may not purchase for sexual acts. That seems to me but, like an extra. Well, that seems to me. Like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. That seems to me like a very unhelpful definition of sex acts. So maybe it would be better to uh, consider multiple terms that we could fold different types of behavior into. Uh, maybe the term sex act isn't really what we're looking for. Maybe we're talking about harm uh, implicitly or explicitly. And sex act is something which sometimes but not always overlaps with that. Like, for example, the people dressing. You did say in that debate with Doe that you felt like dressing with the intent of arousing people in public was a violation of others' consent around children, children's consent. That's but not. Is that not true? No, um, I wouldn't make that argument. So, or rather, if I did, that's not what I intended to convey. Yeah, she definitely made that fucking argument. She definitely did. Well, the problem is that she she didn't specifically say, I think that this is a violation of consent. But she did say that it would constitute making people engage in sexual desire, which is a sex act. And if you're and then it stands to reason that if you're doing that without the consent, it's non consensual, right? Unless you get them to consent to them seeing you in the sexual desire in a sexual way with the way you're dressing or whatever. Like, it stands to reason. She very, very, very heavily implied it with the logic that she was using. She didn't make that specific argument. So she's trying to use some kind of, like, um, plausible deniability, but that's definitely 100% like an argument that you would make from all of the things, all of the conclusions that she came to in the previous debate. Again, the thing I focus on is whether or not you're doing something primarily, emphasis on primarily, in order to appeal to a sexual desire or taste. People do that. That's what do you think the buying, what do you think the, the purchase, what do you think the, the pedo with the, the sex trafficking was doing? What do you think was going on there, Riley? Like, they, their, their obvious intent was with some kind of sex act in mind. It wasn't just trans. I'm going to lose my mind. They're right. their clothing, don't they? There are absolutely people who, um, uh, who, like when you're going out to the club, there are people who dress. I, I mean, th th there are girls out there dressing in ways that have their only consideration is looking sexy and fitting within the boundaries of the law. And that's pretty much it. I would say that's primarily an effort to elicit sexual desire. I disagree, though. I would say that people who do that dress for any number of other reasons aside from trying to elicit sexual desire. Like when I go out to, like when I dress up, I'm not dressing up because I'm trying to like appeal to someone's sexual desire. I usually pick what I wear because it makes me personally happy. But we're not talking about you. We're talking about some people. There are people for whom it is certainly the primary concern. I don't go out dressing primarily. I wear shorts and t-shirts, but I know there are people who will go on out there trying to look as sexually enticing as they can. But I would contest that then, because I would think that the only example where this realistically comes up, and maybe I need to press this more. But it doesn't matter about who, how, what percentage of people do or what percentage of people don't or what most people do. The situation we are specifically talking about in the hypotheticals that Riley has brought up is the situation where somebody does. So while we're having a conversation about how many people do this or what's the likelihood, just, you know, go back to the hypothetical and say, well, in the case of somebody who does etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we can justify it from there rather than having a nonsense conversation about oh well i don't think many people do do that which is obviously bollocks loads of people do that i do that like who so does that or in the debate i think that the only time where this where like the, where you're only dressing primarily for sexual desires or tastes is like when you're wearing like a gym suit and you're using that to like get off i honestly think you're only saying that because the alternative would be acknowledging how unworkable your definition is. There are absolutely people who dress case. in ways which complies with public decency guidelines, but is also primarily about sexual arousal. Like, now, of course, you, you, you know, faced with that, you have two possible responses, which is either you call everyone who's ever dressed for the club a pedophile, uh, or unintentionally enabling pedophilia, or uh, you try and find a way in which the act of dressing to arouse other people while just barely skirting decency laws is somehow not a primarily sexual act. Well, also, like, I don't, I think... Porsche shouldn't be talking about decency laws. We like we can make a normative claim on this instance rather than describing about whether or not you know they fit within the bounds of the law or not. It's completely immaterial to the discussion that we're having. Like we can just say like, okay, well, ha there's plenty of probably sexy things that might get you pulled up on public. De I mean, uh, I guess in this particular instance, the public decency law is kind of the line, but because the public, if you in the case of. We just assume that public decency laws are there too, are there, are there as a reasonable line to define what constitutes something overtly sexual rather than implicitly sexual. Then maybe I can get on grounds of the argument. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on on Vosh here, but uh, like I always hate arguments, moral arguments that come back to some kind of law, 
because the law isn't moral. The law isn't made with morals in mind. Or maybe or maybe it's made with morals in mind, but that's not that doesn't make it any kind of um executive arbiter of what is moral or isn't. That is a conversation that everybody individually should have based on their moral philosophy, rather than or or by some kind of genuine like um iteration from first principles, rather than just saying, well the law says this, that makes it immoral or not, right? So having the law as part of that, I think, waters down the discussion somewhat. Um, the fact well, that your first your resort intent. was to describe your intentions suggests to me that this is, well, I mean, you, you have to say something here, or you would have to change your definition, wouldn't you? Um, I mean, the, the difference is that what you're describing right now are not instances when people are wearing things primarily for sexual desires or interests. You, it sounds, like, you, that sounds like that may be an element of it, but I would not say that's the primary purpose in those situations. How do you quantify that exactly? Um, usually it's going to, well, I mean, so this gets back to like the distinction between like ontology, epistemology, ethics, like, you know, how do we actually tell when people are engaging in a sexual act? Well, usually we're going to go off of the totality of available evidence. Um, well, if they just tell you case, the reason they're doing it is to sexually arouse people. I mean, I've had convos, like, have you ever been to like a slutty Halloween costume party? I, I mean, you can ask them. They're doing it to sexually arouse people. You can just okay, directly so ask them. They will tell you, there's no need to fuss about with it. They will just say it very directly. We need, all right, hold on. Maybe I'm not asking the right questions. So let me ask you then, all right? Because um, maybe this can help you understand at least my perspective better. Because I'm just trying to, what I want is for people to just understand this perspective. So what would you define as a sexual act? I, I, I honestly think it's stupid to even try. I, I guess, Wait, I mean, in, in a, I, I genuinely think that human sexuality is complicated enough that a term to encompass the entirety of acts that would fit within a purview would be subjective and almost impossible to like, like I could come up with one. And what about dressing like a slut? on a deserted island with one other person who has all the coconuts. I digress. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like, but then again, like, you can dress in such a way because you like the way that looks. Like, the, the idea that we're looking at is the intention of titillating others into sexual desire, regardless of what those clothes are, right? But again, that can be different based on other people's thing. Like, obviously you can have, what you intend to do is different from the material impact of what actually happens. For example, like you could be walking around, you know, you know, dressed in you know the color red. If someone has a fetish for the color red, then you are you are you know you you are they are engaging in some kind of sexual desire, right? Sure, but if you are intended to go out with the impact of trying to sexually desire some, trying to get somebody to sexually desire you, though, I think that's that's well, I guess that's the argument we're kind of having here with hypothetical. So it was probably a tangent in my regard, but anyway, I I digress. And another person could come up with a very different one, and I don't know if I could say there's any worse than mine or better. But if I had to come up with like a quick definition, like I don't know, an act which pertains in some way to one or another's uh, uh sexual desire or arousal, like like an uh, an act which is related in some way to a uh, uh, your or another's sexual desires okay that's yeah that all right so we don't sound very different right well, um, i believe kissing your children is okay right but i wouldn't say that kissing is always like primarily done for sexual reasons no you just changed the definition i said no. any act which relates to sexual desire and i promise you that it's not i'm not alone in believing that making out with somebody uh even a quick peck sometimes you know depending on how pent up you are that's life uh absolutely pertains to sexual desire and i think you can oh. do that in front of kids i mean if you couldn't kiss in front of kids like i mean it's all over for all of us i think Sure, but in this instance, so like this gets into like, all right, how do we arrive at like better definitions, right? Because like to an extent, you know, I can agree that like, yeah, we're focusing on like we can have a wide range of different possible things, um, and usually it's going to relate to sexual desires, interests. Like I'm with you on that, but then you introduce an issue where it's like, okay, sometimes we need to be able to make differentiations because I would agree with you that like, yeah, like if you give someone a peck in public, then that's not something that we should call like pedophilia, or that's not something we should call a public sex act. But you which is why I focus on primary. Well, I mean, we can like dialogue back and forth and figure out a better definition, right? And but, the problem that I have is that I, like people keep looking at me like, oh, Riley, you present a really like outlandish, crazy definition, but I have yet to, for someone to present you with a better one. And I feel like this is important for us to talk about and for us to have a clear and concise rule on because we want to be able to have moral rules about when someone is violating someone else's consent in respect to sexual acts. But a single like, term very won't be able to encompass to that because kissing is a sexual act. I mean, often at least, you know, um, you, uh, absolutely. Um, but we can do that in front of kids. That's fine. I think it's kind of weird if you're like looking for groups of kids to make out in front of. Like Doe said, it seems there that the intent uh, to involve children is quite a bit worse than children being incidentally around. Because uh, everyone's kissed near kids. I mean, at least I think most of right. us have. But you were insistent on avoiding uh, specificity with definitions. with or, or you only wanted one. I mean, you wanted sex act. Well, I've defined sex act for you, and I have just described to you a sex act which we conduct freely in public. So your insistence that sex acts commit, uh, done in public violate the consent of others by the category you've agreed to, with my definition, is false. Yeah, then, all right, so then we have to get into the issue of evaluating the strength and the utility 
as I know that you, so like you understand that like words, social constructs, we generally are going to advocate for meanings of words, which give us greater or lower utility, right? You're on board with me with that? Yeah, I like utility, but you, you're a Kantian, aren't you? Of what relevance is that to you? Well, I mean, like with language, we can be able to look at like the meanings of words and make those kinds of evaluations. Mm. So here we can look at two different definitions of what sex acts are, and we can be able to go through applications of those and be able to derive whether or not they lead to outcomes, which we feel are morally sound or justifiable. And so that's the whole point of going through these scenarios. So like, if you give me a rule for what is a sex act, and then you turn around and you say, or not, I don't want to say, sorry, that's loaded language, but then you demonstrate the limitations of that rule, you demonstrate the limitations of that definition, then I would say, okay, so now we can look at a different rule or we can adjust that so we can be able to account for the issues with that kind of rule, right? Right, um, I would agree. And I think that whatever exemptions you would make would well include what Joe was talking about in the conversation. Going barefoot in a park where kids might be uh, when you have a foot fetishist partner. I, I cannot imagine that as a violation of anyone's consent because to everyone around you, they're just seeing a person whose feet are out. Um, but, but I mean, like, to be clear, you no, no I, I mean, I've agreed with Joe's perspective on this. So, I mean, now, apparently, uh, it and I are both unintentionally promoting pedophilia. So, I think that's ludicrous. And uh, well, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll, be, wait, I'll, be, I'll be more specific. I think it's so ostentatious that it borders on bad faith. And it's an attempt at you pedo jacketing as a way of legitimizing a emotional discomfort you have with sexuality. That's the feeling I have. Like, it's so outlandish that the best explanation I can think of is that you're just generally uncomfortable with sexuality and you're looking for the harshest condemnation you can find for people uh, to, to avoid really confronting your perspective. And this is it. And you found it. And it ended with you essentially invalidating uh, the, 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 the child sexual exploitation of a CSA survivor. Clearly, this is not an effective road for us to be walking. There has to be a better, uh, a, a better attitude to be taking towards this. So I would say I disagree with, I think, all of that. Um, but we can go through each step individually and walk you through why, like, why I think each individual part is wrong. I mean, I think that like, the, the speculating to my mindset is blatantly wrong and unfounded. Like, I don't think that you know anything about me or my motivations or why I say the things that I do. No, of course, um, it's an inference. I mean, that's what we have to make, don't we? I mean, we have to infer people's behavior sometimes. And when it comes to arguments like this, I, I cannot imagine a person as intelligent as you would sincerely be making this argument as a component of some broader opposition to child sexual abuse, because that's not what it is. I, I, I mean, uh, exempting some head injury. I mean, there has to be some other underlying motivation. So I reach and I have to infer, you know. Um, do you think, well, hold on. Like, do you think that it could not just be the case that I really care about protecting consent? I, I think this is an extraordinarily bad way of doing it, if that's the case. But if, I mean, if, well, if, me... if you do, I mean, I guess sometimes uh, the thought is not what counts, you know? Okay, so then let's go back because you said that um, just the fact that, so let's go back to, the, you said a lot of things earlier. I want to go through them one by one. So you said that you agree with Doe that going out with your foot fetishist partner in public without shoes around children would make you a pedophile. Do you think that's what my position is? Uh, how about you tell me what your position is on people who would go barefoot in public around their foot fetishist partner? So at, so with the way that you described it to me, that, that I don't have an issue with the way that you described my position. I don't, this is the reason why I was saying in chat that you weren't describing my position because the issue that I had with what Doe said specifically was not the fact that there was someone with a foot fetishist, or there was like someone with a foot fetish going out in public with some with like a partner who had who was not wearing shoes. That was not the issue in and of itself. The point was that the partner of the person with the foot fetish knew about the foot fetish, and that was the primary reason that they went shoeless in public in order to get them off. And you know that Doe agreed to that scenario, right? Like the point isn't the existence of the foot fetish. The point is the intentionally yeah, I, well, primarily I assume, doing something to get to get your partner off in public around other people. Yeah, I would assume if they're partners, they know about that. To me, this is a, a distinction without difference. Yes, I think that's the no, exact same thing. No, I don't think that's, no, because in one situation, you are doing something primarily in order to get your partner off and then the other, you are not. Sure, I don't yeah. care. You, yes, you go barefoot because your partner likes feet. Yes. All right, but hold on. There's a lot more there that you're skipping over. Right? Like, this isn't just your partner likes feet. It's your partner is sexually attracted yes, to so, bare feet. I'm sorry. I'm not, the language I'm using isn't flippant because I'm trying to weasel out of specificity. I accept these terms. Yes, they are sexually attracted to the feet. They're awkwardly shuffling to hide their boner underneath their belt loop or, or whatever. Uh, yes, sure. Um, yeah, fine. you have to be right, Tiffany. Okay. And you know from watching the conversation that Doe agreed that within what they proposed, like the, the tweet that we were talking about, the tweet where they said that I, I mean, there's also like the calling them a pedophile and I also dispute that. I would also, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, but in the tweet that we were talking about, um, they also agreed that like you were able to bring the other like in the like in the scenario that they were describing that like it's also reasonably inferred that the person was able to get their partner to come to orgasm. I I don't know that getting off means a lot of stuff. So they just like came from seeing their feet in public. I'm pretty sure I'm I am about ninety nine percent confident that Doe agreed to the premise that yeah they got their partner to orgasm in front of other people. I. Do if that was still in chat, so was that was that part of the initial premise? 
I, I, I don't believe it was the case. I think when people say getting off, they usually mean like, oh, you're getting off to something, like you find it attractive. At least that's what I'm, I've heard. All right, well, I'm about 99.9% .9 sure that I asked that very explicit question and that Doe agreed. I think so. Doe, I think Doe said that in your conversation that that wouldn't be a thing which necessarily violates the consent of the people around, but I don't think it was part of the initial tweet conversation, at least not to my no, mind. No, but that was the issue, right? Is that that was the natural implication of the initial tweet thread. So, okay, so, so yeah, so let's, all right, let's really break it down then and isolate these variables, okay? I'll use a couple uh, uh, that I use while watching the video. Do you think that a person who, uh, who, who orgasms from the vibrations of a bus, I bring this up because I, I had a friend who could do this, um, who, who does so from the vibrations of a bus, um, that, that them, uh, like coming while on a bus, like riding it, like that's a violation of the consent of the people on that bus? Um, it depends on whether or not they rode the bus with the primary intention of using it to get off. If they didn't, then I would say not. That's why I focus on primary. Who, who cares about the intention? Who cares about it? Like, that whether or not you intend on doing so isn't going to change the reaction with the people that surround you. Like, I mean, or, or the intention of riding the bus, at least. Like, if you just accidentally come from being on the bus, you don't have any choice over that matter. So there's no, like... There's no way in which that you can act to change those consequences, right? If you have to ride the bus, you've got to ride the fucking bus. If all you're doing is coming in public using a bus as a as a makeshift vibrator so that you can do it around other people, and those people witness that, and it's an issue, right? That's where the issue comes from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Again, it's still another kind of weird analogy, but like, hey ho. Intention. So what if they know that they can do this on buses because they've always been able to and they choose to get on a bus? I would say that it depends on whether or not they're primarily trying to appeal to a sexual desire. So what They if, may be aware of it, but if they're not trying to appeal to a sexual desire, then no. What if the couple wanted to go on a walk because they needed to pick up groceries and the whole foot fetish barefoot thing was just sort of a flare along the way? The primary intent of their uh, travel was to go pick up groceries, but they thought, oh, sure, you know, feet off or shoes off, why not? Uh, and then the other person comes in their pants. They're remarkably sensitive, I guess. I would say, um, I think on the basis of those questions, I'd also say that's not a sexual act. Because again, we're looking at primary intention, right? Um, there, it sounds like, when, from what you described, that there's not like primary intention. If anything, it's like it's more of an accident. This, the distinction between these things to me seems arbitrary and impossible to define. What I mean, is like, or is not a person's primary intent? I mean, like you were doing it earlier with how people dress. I, I don't, I don't know how you could ever under, like, w maybe they could have driven to go get the groceries. Right. Like how much of a percent of them not wearing shoes is part of it? I don't know if there's a way to really distinguish primary intent relative to the dozens of other things that might motivate us to do something in the way we do. I mean, my primary well, intent when I go downstairs, like, am I getting chicken nuggies to like- oh, This whole thing is so convoluted, it's making my brain hurt. Oh, oh, conversations about like ethics and like, are so wild. Do fewer good things. Do do fewer bad things and do more good things. There you go. Ethical conundrum solved. Like, to, am I getting them from the oven? Am I saying hello to my cats? Am I enjoying the cooler temperatures down there? Like, it all plays into it. So here, I would say that this is a distinction between ontology and epistemology. This is a difference between like how do we like what is a sex act versus how do we know if someone is committing a sex act. And so when we're getting into the question of how do we know if someone is committing a sex act, right? How do we evaluate what someone's primary intention is? We're going to go off of because it's inductively reasoned, right? the totality of available evidence. So, you know, if someone wears like a low cutting top to, uh, to a party or whatever, like the situation that you described earlier, we can reasonably infer that there's multiple reasons why those clothes are made in such the way that they are. So we would be able to say like, all right, unless more evidence presents itself to the contrary, we probably as a society are going to assume that you're not wearing that primarily for a sexual purpose. But in the contrary, for example, and this was during the kink at pride discourse with wearing a gimp suit, something that is primarily designed for sexual purposes, then we are able to make a pretty easy distinction and say, okay, this is something where we can pretty easily say that like, if you're using it and its primary use is for sexual purpose, then we can infer that you're primarily doing this for a sexual purpose. But how could you do that with a person with a foot fetish? How do you know whether they, the primary intent of their walking was to satiate the fetish or if they were just getting groceries and decided to spice it up along the way? There'd be no way without reading their minds. It's, it's a meaningless distinction in practice. Likewise with taking the bus, if you nut from it, you know, like you can, like you could ask them like, hey, oh. did you, did you get on this bus so you could nut? And they're like, no, I, just really like third street i mean you, you, you could never have that conversation with them i don't think there's there's no way of knowing and and, and what's more like well can i respond to that before you go on well i i, I is is the nutting the thing like if we or, or no what about king at pride there are people who wear leather and gym suits not because it sexually satiates them but because they feel like it's part of the culture of the lgbt community and they wear it to show solidarity now right, it's not my right. fashion choice but that's a, definitely a thing that happens i mean it, it seems like if we're if our definition of a sex act is involving calculus and inference and all of this and we're doing all of it to like but at least we're getting round to actual kink of pride discourse rather than just like meaningless analogies now. Um, because again, I think you make a super easy argument, not based in just some kind of esoteric idea of what constitutes a sect act or not.
just by like thinking, well, you know, how welcome a kid's going to be at a Pride. That's also true. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. There, the 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 the, doesn't have to, the the orgasm itself doesn't have to be the the all and end all of the consequence of this of the discussion. Like, mathematically determine what's appropriate in public. Like, aren't there other ways we could talk about what's appropriate in public? Is wearing foot feet bare in public acceptable? Yes. Is no. kissing in public acceptable? Yes. Is wearing tube tops in public acceptable? Yes. Anything past that, any distinction or differentiation past that, seems like an an, an effort in punishing sin. Like you're looking for people who are well, doing it the wrong way, almost. Like so there's some invisible respond? line. And I, all right, so the reason why we're looking at it through the lens of intent is because we want to be able to say sometimes when someone does something which no one else knows about, that we can still be able to morally condemn them, um, despite the fact that no one knows about it, right? Like the example that I'll use, or the example, we want to do several examples um, during the conversation, but like the primary one I use to describe this is like the perfect date raper, right? We can imagine someone who goes and date rapes someone in such a way where the person never ends up finding out, right? And in that kind of oh, this, this is what I, call, I just want to just I hate deontology so much. There's so much of the moral philosophy arise, re, relies around like divinely intuiting someone's intentions, which you can't actually do in the real world. Like you can make a philosophical argument about what constitutes morality or not, but unless you know, unless you know unless someone, unless you have like, unless you can like infer like perfectly from available evidence and also by getting some kind of confession from the person in general, you're not going to end with any kind of like satisfactory answer to whether whether you can morally impugn somebody or not. It's such a nonsense idea. Um, whereas if, you know, that's why, that's why uh, it's... Situation. There's no measurable physical or mental harm if the other person never finds out. We want some way Do you think if to be able to say why that's morally condemnable, even if we never, like the person who was like harmed in this case never finds out. Yeah, That's you, the reason why. You could invoke bodily autonomy. Yeah, even if they never find out, it's a violation of their bodily autonomy. Would you equate that to jerking off to somebody in your head? Because both um, of them are, are an invocation of them uh, in, 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 your, in your mind, at least? I would not say they are the same, because I would agree that with the latter, there is also a bodily autonomy violation. I think with both situations, you run into a circumstance where you're violating the consent of the other person. And uh, I will while still jerking like, off while thinking about somebody? So that's the extreme implication. I'll use a, well, you did, a, you, a you, you directly said you believe that in your conversation. You said while talking yes. with Doe that, right, that jerking off while thinking about something was uh, using them. You were very insistent on that terminology. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, like, uh, sure, I can justify that. And, but people seem to get hung up on it. But sure, we can, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. So basically... But the first example is stupid. A better example, more realistic, is if you have the park with your girlfriend, she's wearing a sexy outfit, get a boner. She knows it gives you a boner, but this kid at the park is wrong because the girlfriend's dressed sexy. No one give you a boner around the park with the kid. Yeah, no, I, I guess not. I guess that it's not. Um, I think if you're going to maximize utility in the situation, you should try and hide the boner. Like, you can do that. Um, it's a difficult question to answer. Difficult, difficult question for me to answer in general. And I don't have a... Like... Yeah, I guess from like a like a utilitarian perspective, then it probably isn't morally impugnable, but basically, like um, this goes back to the issue of finding words or rules which are able to lead to overall the most outcomes that we are that we feel justified or fine with, right? Because I think that what I'm talking about, the baseline rule, overall leads to like the most um common like I think that like in just about every other scenario people will look at the implications of what I'm talking about and for the large part agree with me. That's like, for example, with, not how I feel, um, I'll admit. All right, well, then we can talk about more examples. But like, for example, when we talk about something like with the age of consent, we have a rule that is useful in society. Sometimes we look at the implications of that rule and we end up squinting a little bit and thinking like intuitively, well, I mean, like if they're 17 months and like 11 or 17 years and 11 months, like is it like really that bad? But here it's like, we can recognize that overall the word gives us or like the rule gives us a lot of utility and a lot of help, even if sometimes it ends up leading us to morally admonish certain behavior that doesn't end up making as much sense. But it makes sense because otherwise the rule kind of falls apart and doesn't have any utility. I don't disagree with that, but I don't see what that has to do with thinking of people while jerking off to them. So here, this would be like the equivalent because I would stand by it. But as far as like the intuitive reaction that people are having, because I understand people are looking at me like, what the fuck, Riley? But the reason why is because it's similar to people feeling like, oh, well, they were both like 17 and 11 months, right? Like it's the same intuitive, like, you I know, it doesn't, it might not feel. comparable. 
I think that the, like no, I, I would think that those are very comparable in terms of how people no, no, perceive them, right? Like there's lots of people who have sex in high school. Um, normally we would look at them and a lot of people would be like, wait a second, right? Like they're high schoolers, they're like exploring their sexuality, they're having sex with each other, it's fine. But I would say the age of consent is still good and we ought to still use it because otherwise we have to draw these lines arbitrarily, we have to draw this line somewhere in society. It might not always lead to like the most perfect No, no I'm not to make an argument on utility again. Like I don't understand her perspective on either explanations but this is the one that gives us the most utility right no i agree about that with the age of consent right. i don't know what and that has to do with thinking about like... a person while you jerk off to them the reason we, we the reason we value the age of consent even though it is by definition an arbitrary line we've drawn you're right there's not really a distinction between being one second before 18 and being 18 of course but we still maintain the law is because the thing we're preventing which is the rape of children is valuable i need the value explained to me on why it's wrong to masturbate while thinking of a person like we, like what, what are we defending what am i fighting so for? there we're defending yeah so there we're, de we're defending someone's categorical right to consent that's what we're defending there. I don't think their consent is relevant. They're not being invoked in anywhere but my thoughts. They're, I'm we not still, using their neurons. It's my neurons. But we would still say that, but for them existing, you wouldn't be able to even picture what they look like. Like, they cannot, you cannot even do that without them existing. So? So I would say that in that extent, and I know that people are going to look at this and be like, well, Riley, this is like a really obscure example. But I would say in that sense that you are still using them similarly if you were using like a picture taken without someone's consent. I think those are very different things. When you, you take a picture of that, when you take a picture of a person, first of all, you're discussing proximity. Second of all, you're talking about creating a physical or digital record of a person. Third of all, we do take pictures without people's consent all the time. If you're just wandering around your workplace or taking photos or your house and you snap a picture of your uh, your your family member or whatever, there are contextual modifiers here. It's not just the like security cameras. I don't know every security camera that I've ever walked in front of, certainly. The context we're talking about here is taking a photo with sexual intent. And for me, it really depends on how you take it, right? Now, if you're like no. sneaking up on them to get like a little candid shot and you jerk off to that, I think the taking the picture bit is weird, like those said, but um, the jerking off bit uh, seems to me like the non-issue. I mean, if you took that picture but didn't jerk off to it, I still think that would be weird. The picture seems to be the problem there. I would disagree. Because we can imagine, so Doe agreed to this, or I was talking about this with someone, it may have been with Doe. Um, we can imagine when someone is in public, right, where we would probably say that it's fine to be able to take pictures of them, right? They don't have the same entitlement to privacy, and maybe they weren't even acting in a sexual way. But let's say that you take a photo of someone and you end up uploading it to a website where it's just, like, the, the whole point of that website is to masturbate to pictures of women taken without their knowledge. Yeah, right? you're talking about creep shots. But that does well, involve taking the picture, which is the element that I take issue with. If you're just thinking, if you're thinking of like creep thoughts, so how is that an issue? Because like, you're like creating a public principle? archive of, of, of real people. You're, you're putting, you're uploading photos. Of, I'm sorry, do you not see the difference? You're uploading no, like, photos. I just want to know what the issue with that is, because it seems like we already live in a society where we've conceded that that is just basically a normal part of society. To upload photos to jerk off sites? No, to upload photos online generally. Online generally, sure. So like the, the taking a photo in a way which uh, broaches a person's personal space would be a way in which you can do it that's bad. And what you do with that photo after you've taken it can be bad. But you can take a photo of a person in a way that's creepy with no sexual intent whatsoever. I mean, you can right, try it. Go, in, go to a restaurant, sit in one of the stalls, and then creepily snap a photo of the person in the stall over. You do not have to jerk off to that photo for you to feel like a weirdo doing it. So in this case, right, I think it's just... Well, let me ask you about what, a different scenario then. What you're like, talking about issue. here is violating social norms concerning photographing others, which are complicated. And I don't know right. if I have a consistent understanding because there, you could throw a million examples. But we're not talking about jerking off to the thought of a person. I just don't understand what the issue with it is. Who's being hurt? Well, the issue, hold on, there's an issue of consent here. So let, we can use another example. Let's say that we have an Instagram model. They do not do any porn or any sex-based work, all right? But they mm -hmm. upload their own pictures of their body online. Um, and a lot of people end up jerking off to that person, mm -hmm. even though they do not provide their consent, even though they do not um, like give consent to be able to do that. Now, do you think that there's any difference between using that person's image versus using the images uploaded by someone who is a professional, like someone who is paid to create pornography. Do you think there's a difference between those two things? Um, one of them is probably going to be way hotter. Right? If you're asking me morally if there's anything wrong to jerking off to the Insta model, my answer is no. I think that you could jerk off to either yeah, and be as morally not. absolved fucking game crashed. Yeah, uh, and, and, and like, like it's just going back to the initial argument that she made. It's like, you you just think, it's literally all the, it's the argument. It didn't need to have any of the Instagram stuff involved there. Literally, the, uh, all, the only argument that Riley's making here is, I think it is wrong to masturbate about thing whilst thinking about somebody. But doesn't give you explicit permission to a master thinking about them, which is nonsensical. Maybe as, as, as morally in the clear in both cases. One second, let me force quit this before my computer explodes. Holy shit. Fuck All right. Game. Then let's then let's take that. All right. So I would disagree with that, but in order to get at that, we have to go with other examples. Okay. So let's say that we have someone who's not an Instagram model. Let's say that we have someone online who is um, just like your average like family Facebook. member. People, people used to jerk yeah. off to Facebook uh, swimsuit photos all the time. Like, you know, that was like a whole thing. Now boomers use Facebook, but back when it was novel, people would be like, oh, I saw her, I saw her, uh, uh, you know, her swimsuit photos and I jerked off to it. That's a, a you know, not even yeah. swimsuit photos. Sometimes they'll just see like a cute girl or whatever. Now I never engage in this behavior. I know that you can type boobies into Google uh, and, and, and some show up, but some other people haven't learned that yet, so. Right, well, we can imagine that like if you go on Facebook, all right, let's take the same scenario except instead of the Instagram model, you just have like, um, let's say that you have a person and they work with someone 
who they are also friends with on Facebook. They have a crush on that person. Um, and then as a consequence of that crush, they end up masturbating to pictures of that person on social media. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, after, let's say that after this person does this for so many number of times, they end up going and telling the person who they masturbated to the images to that they have been masturbating to them. Mm -hmm. Can we reasonably imagine why the person who had been masturbated to would feel uncomfortable being told this information? Yeah, because you told them. Again, the issue is in the telling. It's not in the act. It's them. That's the, uh, that's the rookie mistake. Wait, no, that's not, that's not the issue here, though, right? Like, it absolutely they... is the issue there. Yeah, you should have kept your fucking mouth shut. You'd be fine. So it's fine to be able to engage in behavior if they just never find out. Uh, if it doesn't involve them in their consent or bodily autonomy at all, yeah, they're not there. You're just thinking of them. And if you tell other people, that's also an issue as well. Like, because then you're getting other people involved rather than just something that's in your head. It's stopped being some thing that's, you know, in your own head and completely arbitrary, right? And then as soon as you tell somebody else, that's when it starts becoming an issue because you're involving other people and you're, you know, brandishing thoughts about somebody else to other people, right? Like, sure. I don't, need their, I, like, I don't need their permission to think about them while jerking off to them. There are plenty of things I could do that are fine that they might be uncomfortable if I told them. If I, like, jerking off while looking at pornography is fine, at least it doesn't violate consent, you know? But if I went up to them and said, hey, last night I jerked off to pornography, they would also think that's pretty creepy that I told them, right? Past that, All I mean. Right. But now we're at a problem of just defining, like, what counts as involving someone? Certainly not that. All right, but what, can you tell me, like, where is the threshold for involving someone? That is the issue. Well, I think at the very least, they should be there. I, I mean, there should be some kind of contact. Sex... Wait, there has to be physical contact? No, like, like any kind of contact. You could be on the phone. I mean, literally anything. But, like, we're talking about zero contact. You're just thinking of them. There's nothing unless you believe in some kind of magical, the Japanese thing. Jeez, we're doing this for two hours now. Fucking hell. So much content. I guess, you know, fortunate I've all as well, so. You sneeze okay. if you're talked about, you know, like something like that. But Wait, anything, anything past that. Imagine people no who are able to engage in sex acts alone, right? Yeah, it's been known to happen. So in that case, contact actually does not matter. At, at, it actually doesn't matter. Not for committing a sex act, but for committing a sex act with a person, then yeah, the, some kind of affiliation of, of any kind would be necessary. Okay, so here we have to figure out, like, where's the threshold for involving someone else? I, so let's... I, I'm sure philosophers have lived and died discussing this. I, well, I'm un wait, I'm uninterested. It does not involve merely thinking about a person. No, wherever the line does, is, it's, no, the the line is, it's past that. I don't want to have a conversation about what, per what exact level of contact. We're talking about thinking about a person here. This doesn't even count. Wherever the conversation no. starts, it's not here. All right, well, let me explain why it's relevant then. Because the reason why it's relevant to determine at what point involving someone else in a sexual act, or at what point we can say that you're involving someone else in a sexual act, um, the reason why it's important to be able to define that for purposes of this discussion is because in the original discussion, in the original tweet that we were talking about, where Doe said that I had called them a pedophile, which I didn't, what I specifically said was, I said that they were either intentionally making an argument that pedophiles would make, or they had negligently made one, were that they weren't your... aware of the implications, but that they negligently made one. Were people in your and... audience calling it a pedophile? Were people in my, I mean, like, I think at the point, I... so the answer to that, truthfully, is probably at the point where they agreed that they would affirm the ability for people to be able to orgasm in front of children. I'm pretty sure it was taking place well before that. Now I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna that, go that internet my... sleuthing, but I'm re see this is this is one of those semantic differences that it's, what was it distinction without a difference when in the context of the conversation you all were having. And by the way, I agree with no. almost everything we cool. talked about. So what wait whatever you say about it, you'll have to say about me too. I'm afraid. Um, in in the context of the conversation, it's pretty clear where your condemnations are rooted and what they lead to. Now it, semantically, can we prove that you specifically use that language? Doe, you are a pedophile. Now maybe there's some evidence somewhere, but I don't know of it. But in terms of the effect. This has on Doe. I think it's well within its rights to say that you did so because the language you've used feels, at least to us, like the lawyer version of saying that. You're, you've, you've constructed the uh, is but isn't, uh, you know, the, the not really a dog whistle, but you found a way to say it without saying it. And, oh, and as Doe pointed out, your audience vibed with that. So I. The reason, all right, well, can I justify this then? Sure, but the, the, the initial Twitter take, which was just going barefoot in front of a partner uh, because they have a foot fetish in public, like this, this to you was what warranted saying an inadvertent defense of pedophilia? I've just, I, I don't think those are the arguments pedophiles make. I've seen well, the wait, crazy on. internet YouTube exposés of like Discord moderators whose lives have been ruined because they, uh, you know, got caught harassing teens or whatever. This usually isn't the argumentation they engage in. So, Shu hates pedophiles. Shu on head is, 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 a, is a, 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 a voracious anti-pedophile hound. And, and, and even Shu here uh, did not hey, find um, those arguments sussy wussy. I just don't think it's appropriate. I'm sorry, one moment, something's happening. Uh, um, just tech, uh, one, one moment. No worries. Um, you brought, you talked about my girlfriend. She really would like to come on. She said, um, she's, it, it seems urgent. Oh God, it's urgent. Urgent. What? I, um, I would like to know what it's for. Uh, it's I, already extended a little bit past. I mean, we obviously have some severe disagreements here. I just feel like the, the, the terminology that you employed, um, 
what just destroyed a chance at a good conversation. I feel like most of what I said well, stands for itself. Just in, in what 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 needs to be said. I still haven't got a proper understanding of what constitutes a sex act, what constitutes sexual desire, and what constitutes involved violating somebody's consent. We've still not had this conversation because you just lost in a bunch of meaningless analogies and hypotheticals without us saying like having a clear definition of what does and doesn't is. Try and get because this she's been and she oh, feels the same way. I'm just reading messages, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been straw manned and harassed because of this, and I'd like to defend myself. My okay. pla this platform is not for your exonerations. I'm covering this drama. If, if this has anything to do with any context beyond the one tweet of hers that I looked at, then it's beyond the scope of what I'm doing here. You have your own stream. I've seen you with more than a thousand viewers for a good portion of the day. At any point, uh, your girlfriend come on, I'm sure, and uh, correct the record. All right, then I'd like to go back to. The specific tweet and i'd like to be able to defend what i was saying about it because right. i think that what i was saying was defensible now when we're talking about i, I just want to like start with like the plain meaning like i just want to like talk about the, the plain meaning of what doe was implying mm -hmm. you'd agree with me that doe agreed that the implication of their tweet was to justify being able to orgasm in front of children right no i, I think that's remarkably uncharitable you know Vosh, they literally agreed to that verbatim um that's fine i don't think that's a summary of their argument I think they were making the argument that there are, it's it, by the way. Uh, I, I, I think that their argument was that there are types of sexual acts that you can engage in fairly in public, which you and I agree with, making out with people. Uh, that's fine. Um, and, but, uh, you're and addressing, but you're not addressing the argument. Though. It's, if, if the orgasm is the critical distinction here, then if there are people with, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, fine-tuned genitalia who can come from kissing, a miracle, I know. Some exist. But this, is a, this isn't kissing. This is appealing to a foot fetish. Kissing right? is absolutely Ultimately, they agree sexually... that they justified and it doesn't even matter. Like that doesn't even matter whether or not, you know, it's kissing or it's for fish. The the kid the, the clear outcome is the fact that they've come, right? They've orgasmed. Um getting someone off to their foot fetish to the point of orgasm in front of children. They justified that. Now what does that mean to you, uh, when you say that? What do you mean what does that mean to me? What, they what justify you... being able to bring someone to orgasm with their foot fetish in front of children. You mean like they just see your bare feet and they come from it? Well, that was specifically the language that they used in their tweet. Right, well, they said that their partner likes feet, and I asked them about what that means. I asked, do, did you mean that this was a foot okay. fetish? I asked them. All right, we can have another conversation about gender. I'll use it right now, but this is, we also have to have a conversation about gender. So, Thank you. Um, so it, um, when we're in this kind of a situation, said okay. that it agrees um, to the idea that that was specifically talking about a foot fetish, right? Mm -hmm. It agreed to that, okay? Mm -hmm. And it agreed to the idea that um, the partner was primarily trying to get its partner off on the basis of that foot fetish in front of kids. I don't, yeah, I don't know if, with the original tweets, I don't know if they specified in, in those tweets the, um, the, the, um, like, orgasm, like, getting off can that's be a why I asked. That's why I asked it. I yeah. asked Elle more questions about what exactly it meant, and it said that that's what it meant. Gotcha. Or it agreed with that characterization, all right? Um, so I asked further clarifying questions because that's what I thought it meant. And it agreed with that assessment. I think Doe earlier said that's not the case, but we can we can work. We, let's work with the most extreme possible example. I mean, Doe, I, Doe said in my chat that's not the case, but it, I had I only a better I mean, memory. And chat, if, if you chat, if you have the full list of tweets, you're free to bring them up. But um, anyway, with regards to the to the specifics here, okay, fine. Uh, making out with a person. Say a person has a um a hair trigger. You make out with them in public. They come from it. Now 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 making out with a person is undeniably a sexually gratifying act. In fact, unlike foot fetishes, it's an almost universally sexually gratifying act. For me, if I saw we're a bare foot, we're not all, talking about that. If I we're saw talking about what it said, this isn't what it said. All right, I, I'm talking with you is whether about or not what I said was justifiable, and we're going off of what it said. Right, and I'm I'm talking with you right now about an instance where a an act of public sexual gratification leads to an orgasm, which I think is exactly what you were referring to. I mean, I think these are no, we're identical. talking about where that's not identical. How is it not identical? Because in the second scenario, you're talking about doing something where you're not doing something primarily to no, sexually No, no, you are it. making out primarily to sexually, uh, uh, at least for me, when I make out with a person, the main reason I'm doing it is usually uh, because we're horny. That is definitely not just like 51%. That's like overwhelmingly the reason that I am doing that. Uh, so this is a primarily sexual act so designed for gratification. So you're saying that you're making out with someone primarily in order to orgasm, and then you come to orgasm in front of children. No, in order to elicit arousal, and if they, in that arousal, nut in their pants, and it's in like a park or something. This is no, what I mean by not, the way, wait, wait, hold on. This is what I mean by the way about, wait, this is what I mean about the bad faith. 
the language that you elicit really does come off like you're just looking for clips in front of children. In front of children. Wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Riley, Riley, nobody here, least of all me, would back off of a take. Okay, I am fully aware of what I'm saying. I have at no point indicated that that's not the case. No, I've kept saying it. you're in a park, you're in public, kids could be there. I've said this so many times, but every time you insist in front of the children, you're very clear. You want to get that into what a 30 or 60 second uh, snapshot of the conversation. I'm not, trying to get, I'm not trying to get a clip. It comes I'm off that way. We all know take. what we're talking about. So I'm stop to explain with my take. the semantic runabout. Let's just. This isn't semantics. This has to do with the specifics of this case. So I ask you, you make out with them. You're in a public park. There are people of all ages there. The per I don't think that. To be fair to Riley here, I actually don't think that she's trying to get some kind of clip. I think that she's just trying to get it like a firm, complete answer in one in its entirety to be able to then move the conversation on without any kind of other qualifiers or whatever. Well, I can understand why Vosh is um, wary of her doing, theoretically possibly doing so. I can understand. Person with whom you are making out has a hair trigger and they come from making out with you. What a gift they have. Do you and think I would this distinguish is... That. I'm sorry? I would distinguish that. I would say that in that case, you're not trying to get them to orgasm in that sense. They have a hair trigger. They come accidentally. Anyone who comes from looking at their partner's bare feet also has a hair trigger. That's not a hair trigger. You're appealing to specifically a foot fetish. Yeah, There's a big difference. No, that is that. That's absolutely a fucking hair trigger. Like, they can't help that they have a foot fetish, right? They have it or they don't. And if they have it, and if someone does it without their knowledge, and then they come, that is literally a hair trigger. That's no, in no way different. In fact, it's even, is it the, the only difference between that and the making out is that the, the person who has the orgasm and then has the hair trigger to make out intended to, in the first place to engage in the making out. That's the difference here. Like, if you want to go back to your kind of deontological point of view here, Riley, then this is the, the then this is the, the deciding factor in these two particular positions. And the person that's making out in your hypothetical and you're within your moral framework, Riley, the person who is making out is the one who is more morally imputable for the orgasm that's had in front of children, rather than the person who does one accidentally because someone had their feet out and they happened to have some kind of uncontrollable sexual, gratific sexual gratification from it. The fact that it's a kink and it's not like socially and whatever what else would find sexually gratifying doesn't change the fact that it was a hair trigger. It just doesn't. It's just some like fucking Christian morale, moral type shit where the only things that can be considered like as real sex, really sexual um, are like some kind of certain things that Riley can prescribe rather than the actual reality, the material reality of what the individual actors in these hypotheticals view as being something sexual, especially when they have a hair trigger that makes them orgasm if they see their feet. Come on. Wait, okay. So, yes. If you have a foot fetish and you can come simply from looking at feet, you have a hair trigger in addition to having a foot fetish. But no, everyone, that's not what was talked about. Almost everyone, at least, yeah. likes that's making not out. What was, that was not what was that's in That's exactly what we're talking about. about. We're not... The, the tweet, what the tweet, what, the, what, the, did the tweet specifically say orgasm? Because anything short of that, we're operating off of inferences and reinterpretations, okay? No, I was able to specifically ask Doe what it meant, and they agreed with my assessment that we're talking about a foot fetish and that you could justify bringing someone to orgasm in front of children. Yeah, but if and if they do it just by looking at people's bare feet, that would be a hair trigger. Here, the tweet. But, although to be fair, in this issue, it's because the partner likes feet. But then again, the person who you would have to, if you from like this deontological perspective, if it was if the person was, if the person you're more you should be morally impugning here is the person going shoeless in public. Although I guess that's the um, that's like the dose tweet anyway. But then the 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 tweet doesn't mention orgasm it doesn't mention getting off it just mention being shoeless because they like feet and if all it is is just some kind of internal thoughts you have about all oh, that those feet are sexy then literally it's just in your fucking brain there's no argument against it like it's not there's no consent being violated because it's in your fucking head it's you're appealing to thought crime Riley. this is nonsensical but, no, 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 but it's not just that all right. It's not just that we're talking about doing someone doing something primarily in order to appeal to that specific sexual desire. So and so right? is kissing. Wait, making out is a thing. When I make out with someone, I am doing it to specifically appeal to their sexual desire. Being but you're not doing it specifically to get them off. No. When if you walk, why are you talking about Kyle Rittenhouse and Donald Trump? I'm British. I don't give a shit. Fuck off. Whatever. In pub by get them off, you mean orgasm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the anybody who could come just from seeing feet like out there is as much of a hair trigger as a person who could come simply from making out. Look at this tweet, all right? What They agreed with me, all right? So this is an extrapolation. Like if Some you go shoeless like to a public event because your partner likes feet, you're not involving children in a sexual act. This doesn't even use the term getting off. I asked them, hold on. Some people like feet. That's obviously referring to a foot fetish. I asked uh -huh. though, if that's referring to a foot fetish, they agreed. 
Okay. Right. So that's step one. And if you go shoe list to a public event, because your partner likes feet, because your partner has a foot fetish, you're appealing to that foot fetish. We're talking about a sexual act. Yeah, but we're not you talking about orgasm. You are trying to appeal. You are doing something because you know it's specifically appealing you, to you your partner. You are all over the place. This tweet does not, I'm not even suggest place. orgasm. Some people this like feet. Maybe, maybe you could possibly construe the fact that, it, depending on the definition you have of sexual act, that the act of wearing the feet, or the act of going shoeless specifically to titillate your partner's foot fetish, that could be considered a sexual act between the two of you specifically. Because at no point are the children involved whatsoever. They just happen to be there. They're not materially affected by it. They don't even know what's going on. They're not even comprehending that the interaction's even happening because it's literally in your fucking head. Like, the two of your fucking heads. Like, that, that, like that's not involving your child in the sex act. That's not. That's not there's not, no way are the children in any way close to being even tangentially involved in it. Like, maybe if they actually came, sure, I would, I would... I would entertain the argument there. Like I think earlier I said, well, maybe that's poor form, right? But that's not the hypothetical that Doe is proposing in this tweet that it's, that it's tweeted. If you go, Riley, 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 some people like feet. If you go shoeless to a public event because your partner likes feet, you're not involving children in the sexual act. I've watched your debate with it twice, and in neither case was I under the impression that Doe seeded the idea that this tweet implied orgasm. Doe went on, that, Doe went on to discuss reckon. further hypotheticals with you. I do not recall that. Now, do I have good memory? I absolutely do not. But I do not have any memory of that taking place. If we're going to talk about anything specific, it is why you thought this tweet justified saying that Doe was promoting pedophilic uh, uh, arguments, intentionally or unintentionally. This tweet right here is unassailable. It is bulletproof. You could armor Iraqi I soldiers disagree. with it, and they would be un that you could drop a Moab on them, and they would I live. I absolutely disagree. So you think so? So let's remove the orgasm. You think that you're involving children in a sexual act? by going to a place barefoot with your partner and choosing to be barefoot because you know your partner likes your feet, like they have a foot fetish. Now, hold on, pause. That is a yes or no question, right? All right, then the answer is no, and I'll explain it. Really? Okay. Because in there, specifically with the last part, involving children in a sexual act, I would say that you're causing harm by engaging in incredibly risky behavior. What is risky? Right? Um, when you're engaging in something which has a very high likelihood of causing someone else harm. So you are either directly involving someone else in a sexual act, or you risk doing so. By walking around barefoot. That's a risky act? It's not by walking around barefoot. It's by walking around barefoot specifically because you know that it gets your partner off by virtue of their foot fetish. So how is this different from making out with your partner in public? See, now we've because removed orgasm from the table. We're just making out. So to be clear, I'm talking about a full-on steamy makeout sesh. None of this high school... Actually, high schoolers make out harder than anyone, I guess, like, because it's the first time you've done it, right? At least I'm better at it now. But I'm talking... Let's say fucking, fucking slobbering makeout. Blah, you know, you're just insanely into it. This is absolutely for sexual gratification for you both. Now, is this a bit tasteless? Um, sure. I would argue it can be a bit tasteless in public. That PDA, that's a lot. But is it involving children in a sexual act if there are children in the vicinity? If you're in a park, if you're in an airport, is it involving I mean, them in a sexual act? Yeah, the risk involves becoming no and um well, so we need to go through this. So not all kissing is a sexual act. I'm right? specifying. We've already moved right, I understand that I'm I'm building up to that. So in this kind of a situation, what we're talking about is effectively crossing a threshold from where you are not engaging in what we would call a sexual act, because it's not your primary intention of making out, but somewhere along the ways that shifts and now you are. All right. Yeah, and there, I would say that you are engaging in a sexual act by right? making out. Yeah, okay. So, so not, yes. not just making out. You mm -hmm. conceded that like, no, that you've crossed the threshold where now you're doing it primarily for sexual. Yes. I, I didn't concede it. That was my opening statement. And yes, you've right. done, you're doing so all not, of that. So it's not just, so let's be clear. Like it's not be like reductive. It's not just making out. Like we're talking about something very specific here. Are you, right? are you paid by the hour before even finishing law school? This is extraordinary. Yes. I'm not, what are you talking about? I'm I, just responding to your argument. I'm engaging with what you said. Okay. I, well, you, you're, you're repeating what I've said. Uh, yes, it is a sex act. I would agree. You're making out hot and heavy. It is a sex act. Do you think it's, right. do you think it's involving adjacent children in, in, in the sex act? Do you think that you're without their consent, uh, you know, I think, violating? You heavy, I think that you run a heavy risk of involving them if you do it publicly, or if you do not recluse yourself to a private vicinity in order to be able to continue doing that. Like, that's the reason we tell people, hey, get a room, you know, because at some point we realize, yeah, like there's probably a threshold that you cross where you ought to go somewhere private. Okay. This is not an extreme take. So and I think so. Like, if you want me, I can give you another analogy. For no, no, I know. I just I have a follow-up question, then we can entertain this analogy. So, you're telling me that if a person on Twitter was like, "Yeah, I don't care. I'll make out with my husband when I see him. I don't give a fuck where I am," you would like quote tweet that person and say you're unintentionally or intentionally justifying pedophilia no. with these arguments. No, wait, hold on. No. We have, wait. We have established every single equivalence. We are talking about a oh, sexually gratifying college. act done primarily for no. sexual gratification, a sex act. No. Which we, wait, which we are doing in public. It is 100% equivalent. We have annihilated the orgasm. No. It is not relevant to the specific example because it wasn't in the tweets. The the behavior 
I am I am reduced to assuming that you just have a a, a hatred for foot fetishes, which by the way, same. And and no, your I, bias is from that, or it has something to do with dough. Wait, because these are equivalent. Bias, Expl Ex explain to me what the difference yeah. is. Based on every prior that's been taken into this conversation, these are entirely analogous with each other. He is absolutely correct. These are functionally analogous based on all the definitions that they have come into this this, this discussion with and or have come to an accord on behalf of the, uh, throughout this discussion, right? This is absolutely 100% analogous. She is cornered. She has to answer this. It is. Between the makeout that I just described and the foot fetish example illustrated in Doe's tweet, where it said you are merely going footless while outside uh, with a foot fetishist partner. No orgasms involved, no getting off. Two sex acts done in public. Why is one of them just, sorry, wait. shoeless, not footless. Why is one of them justifying pedophilia and the other isn't? So wait, hold on. We need, so is the example of the tweet that you sent out, are we not talking about that? Because I can distinguish why that's not something like what I was, like the other examples that we're talking about. In that instance, you did not specify that like, oh, the reason that they're doing that, the reason that they're gonna go kiss their husband is in order to specifically appeal to some kind of sexual desire. I, no, like, I did say that. I did say you are making out with somebody because it is sexually gratifying. You're no, going after them. You can even announce it beforehand. I am going to make out with you because it is hot and sloppy. And then you do so. You can you can be able to make out with someone for multiple reasons. No, now, I, no, wait, case, wait, Riley. You need a form of No, 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 no. What I said specifically controlled. That that's not talking about a sexual act based on what you said. No, you said it was. Based on the tweet. We're talking about, your, all right, there's two different scenarios. That you're no, 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 Riley, Riley. My example of making out in public was one which you described to be a risky sex act, and likewise with Doe's tweet. So I ask you to distinguish between them. Please don't say, well, not all kissing is sexual, because that's already accounted for in the example that I've proceeded with. No, I mean, hold on, but that is, so otherwise, um, so we can go through this. So in the situation, specifically like we, what you described, and I want to make sure because I feel like, because what, this was the implication of what you just said, I feel like you're about to turn around and say, oh, well, just because Riley says that these two things are analogous, because right now I'm inclined to believe that they are, they're going to say that all kissing in public is therefore endorsing pedophilia, which is not my argument. No. I would say that in the scenario, like what you described, specifically the way that you're engaging, where you're engaging primarily in order to get each other off, if you're doing that in front of children, it looks a little sus. Yeah. Okay, so would you say that a person who defends that, the sloppy makeout sessions in public, whether it be in an airport or a public park or wherever else, would you say those people are intentionally or unintentionally enabling pedophilia with their arguments? As you did with that, Doe. I would say that if you're trying to defend being able to get off your partner sexually in front of children, in whatever way that is, those then that tweets, would be a little sus. Those tweet did not say get off. They agreed. It no, agreed. we are talking. You said it, what no, you said. Agreed, Wait, that's what the Riley, was. you, they, it no, agreed. Riley, it, it, Riley, it has been in my chat saying that is not the case. I don't believe you. Now, either way, you, you wait, Riley, I haven't muted yet and I don't want to. You called Doe what you called Doe before this conversation. So based only on the content of the tweet, you must answer me. What is the difference between a person defending sloppy makeout sessions in public and what Doe tweeted, which did not involve getting off, did not involve orgasm, said only going barefoot around your foot fetishist partner no. to Turn them on. As oh, one no, does, when I make out with somebody, I am turned on. When somebody leans in to make out with me, they do it to turn me on because it's a makeout right, session. No, I re so the problem with the way that you're asking this question is that it's presupposing that the tweet in question doesn't have the meaning that I reason that is reasonably surmisable and that Doe eventually confirmed. The, all right? There's Your nothing support. in that tweet that says getting off at all. Nothing in there even infers that's implies. What, that's what the implication is. How? And that's why what? I asked Doe about How? the implication and they agreed to me. It didn't. It has been in my chat yes, saying it didn't. It. I, and by the way, I don't remember it doing so either. I only remember it entertaining the hypothetical after it feeling did like it. multiple but times. I asked it very clearly. I want to, Riley, on the tweet. I am not interested in arguing with you against a person's interpretation where they're in my chat to argue against it. I am only interested in talking about the tweet and reasonable inferences from it. And nothing in this tweet even remotely suggests orgasm. Going shoeless to a public event on, because wait. your partner likes feet? Where does this imply orgasm? I think, hold on, someone just sent me the actual clip. If you want, we can watch it together. Sure, but it doesn't matter. I want to know why you responded what? to Doe with regards to this tweet. No, where in this tweet Matter, because this is still clarifying the exact meaning of it. I want you to explain to me where in this I tweet, have the clip. We can go over it right now. Not, we will go over it shortly. But I want you to tell me, without any further context, does this tweet in and of itself suggest to you? I don't too much commentary, but Bosch is just gay. Bosch is getting all the points that I would have gone through here. It's like trying to pin her down on the fact that it's that you know we're trying to we've managed to pin things down to something analogous, um, and that she's refusing to answer. I mean, obviously, what's going to be what's going to be more important? Like once she does make, once she does answer, is going through whatever clip that they've managed to get. But hey, -ho. orgasm is involved. This tweet leads to a reasonable implication that it is. I yes. think that is either insane or dishonest, and I have to. I don't think it, it is considering that it literally agreed to that interpretation. How long after? What was this? June thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Did you peer into the future? Do you have a crystal ball? I'm able. No, we have to make reasonable assumptions about what the meaning of these How words is it reasonable? are. reasonable? Because it's talking about a foot fetish. What is, you can have a foot fetish without food. coming in your pants. I have never known a person with a foot fetish who came in their pants because a person near them was barefoot. That's some high-level stuff. It was reasonable since it agreed to that description of it. Hold on. So those also, like, it, this is under the assumption that, that this person is turned on so much by feet they can come without even touching themselves, right? Because there's no, like, 
he's not even getting into the act of masturbation. This has to be a very specific person who can come from just looking at feet, right? That's how much feet turn them on, right? None of, none of this even close to being implied in the tweets. Here, hold on. And again, by the way, I don't think it did. But even if it did, that doesn't make you post hoc right. We are not a results based analysis uh, lover over here. If you are wrong, then it's it accidentally evidence. proven right in the future. Hold on. No, I hold think on. it's good hold evidence. Wait, I have on. a pretty good idea about what was being talked about. Hold on. So Doe says in the in the chat right now, I didn't quote clarify the meaning of the tweet. End quote. I continued in another example that orgasm in public can be okay sometimes. That is not what the tweet means, Vosh. So Doe is saying right now that this tweet does not contain any inference to orgasm, which I don't read in it either. As an orgasm I just, lover, I just I'm not seeing it here. I want to and I can't. I would disagree. Some you, people you like can't. if you go to all right, hold on, because okay. we need to make sure that we're putting this tweet in the context. Show what we're clip. talking about within the context of this thread is specifically sex acts. All right. Show, show that was clip. what we were talking about in the context of this tweet thread. Sex right? acts include making out. Have you ever come from making out? What? no, but this is wait, so wait, hold on. Ha, but making no, out wait, wait, wait but making out can be a sex act, right? Context, all right? But making out can be a sex tweet, act, can't it? The initial tweet was talking specifically in the context of an entire thread about sex acts. Yes, like okay. making out can be, as you agreed with me, but I've never come from it a makeout. It can session. be if you are trying to do it in order to orgasm. Wait, you think making out is only a sex act if you do it in an well, effort There's an important to... message here from Doe in the chat. The entire point of my tweet, Thread Vosh, is that sex representations of desire actual sex acts are different, and that's what the show example is for. Sure, that exact 100%, it is entirely correct there. Absolutely. Orgasm? Uh, yeah, you can be able to make out for romantic reasons. You can make out for like I've made out with my girlfriend for like for just romantic reasons. You don't have. But it doesn't doesn't matter because the, the hypothetical we're talking about is specifically to try and make an analogy between one sex act and another under Riley's definitions, right? Okay, so Riley thinks that the feet thing is a sex act. So we're going to try and find an analogous makeout session, which is all which she also defines as a sex act, and get and then get her to explain why these are different morally if they are done in public. Right. This is the key thing we're trying to draw. I'm not, wait, hold on. You're, you're, you're in, yeah, this is this is like a basic logical error. I'm not saying all forms of making out are sex acts, but like, so what about slapping a person's ass? If that doesn't make them orgasm, does that not make it? What is your definition? Well, there be other. Sex no, there be other problems with that. You all right? Hold on. You know that there would be other problems with that kind of an example. With, a, with you your know partner. That, what with your partner? Well, yeah, you slap your partner's ass. Like, there would be like a there would be like a bodily autonomy issue. No, it's it's your partner. They're fine with it. It's your partner. If it's your partner, then it's just nothing. I mean, if they've That's already been there, but, but the only issue there would be a bodily autonomy one. Well, okay, so say they're fine with it. What about squeezing their tits in public? What about squeezing their? Then I've never been. I've never be been a with a girl. Autonomy one. I mean, like I don't know that. If you, is that I mean, a sex like, act? I, uh, not if you're trying to. Not if you're not doing it in order to get them off. Oh, this is wait. Okay, so. I mean, it would be another issue. It would be a bodily autonomy issue. So you no, there's no bodily. They're my. In this assumption, they're my partner. They're fine with this. So you're you're saying that I could grope my girlfriend's tits in public. But it's no, not, not well, but it's not a sex act because I know that my girlfriend can't come from it on its own. No, this has all right. So this is a difference between again ontology and epistemology. No, it's a difference so, between a sensible yes, understanding of sex acts and a nonsensible one. No, no, I'm gonna. <laughs> is caging a dick in theory. like one of those chastity cages a sex act? That thing's just, that goal of that thing is to do the opposite of get you off. That's the that does the all opposite. Right, well, no, you need to stop and listen to me, and I will explain why you cannot do that. Give, give and me the, why it's give still me not the clip. With, give me the clip with though. Give, please give me the clip with though. I know this conversation will continue forever. Well, I need to explain. Are right, you asking There's me a always question? An explanation. Give explain. me the clip. I'll, I'll watch what? it with There's always an explanation. I can explain to you. You ask me a question. I can give you an answer. Can I please what give you an answer? What question did I ask you? You asked me why you wouldn't be able to, or why you would be able to grope your partner's uh, breasts in public. I would say that you would not be able is to. Is it a sex act? To grope? I would say it is not a sex act, but because we're looking primarily at intent, when we surmise what a sex act is, then any reasonable person would look at that and still say that we ought not allow that kind of behavior in public. Why? This is also the reason why, even though, you may have the situation with the good faith wearer of like a gimp suit. We can imagine where you have instances where like someone wears a gimp suit just because they like the feel of it or whatever. We would still say that you aren't allowed to do that around people because the primary intention of wearing that thing, of doing that thing, is for sexual purposes, right? Like in the situation you described, like even grabbing, if you're not like trying like to, even if you're not appealing to a partner. Yeah, but that doesn't mean someone's being involved in the sex act by you doing it because the arousal is only in your head. It still doesn't make, it's still not analogous. It still doesn't make any sense. Sexual desire. Most people would look at that kind of behavior and understand that's usually what people are doing. So since we are looking at intent, that's the best we have Riley, to do in this kind this of situation. this is wildly inconsistent for- This is for, absolutely not inconsistent. Is, no, no, it absolutely is. So first of all, earlier you, agreed, earlier you agreed to my definition of a sex act, which just meant behavior adjacent to sexual interest or desire. No, I didn't agree to it. I acknowledge- So, so, for, so, so a sex no, act did, for you- So hold on, wait, 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 Riley, wait, no, because Riley, you have a shovel and there's still dirt beneath you. You will never stop. So we, we no, can't, we, can't you, we, we could be here until 3 a.m., my time. We could be here forever. Give me the clip from Doe. You could have linked it in the in the Discord by now. Explain to me, please, while linking it, do both. Explain to Here's me the link. why the definition of a sex act should only contain things which are meant to achieve orgasm. You said that it has to be towards getting off. 
Um, well, the reason, all right, so hold on. So usually getting off is the inference, all right? See, she's just backing off again now. She's just backing off. Although I've got, I have found a, I have found a very, very, very rare clip of Riley Grace Rochong engaging with Pride protesters. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. Whoa. He just committed a sex act in front of me. Oh. Okay. Um, but I would say when you are primarily appealing to sexual desires or interests, that that naturally entails trying to get off. And that is no. the primary thing you are trying to do. Then that is the implication of that action. Absolutely not. Something can be a sex act without it being about trying to bring a person to orgasm. What about people then, like having their face pissed on? You can't come from that, can you? But it's absolutely sure, but a sex act. But we need to be able to acknowledge that there are sex acts where someone is not coming to orgasm. Otherwise, we end up in situations where, for example, if you have someone who rapes a person, but they are impotent, they are unable to come to orgasm, we want to still be able to call that a sex act. We yeah, I, I agree. I don't think orgasm rape. has anything to do with a sex act. I think it's... And I would agree. Okay. So if you're making out with a person real hot and heavy, do you think that's a sex act? If the goal for the makeout session is to sexually arouse both people? I think that if the natural implication of that is arousing them enough to eventually bring them to orgasm, then yeah. Like they're both... You just said orgasm so wasn't the the necessary. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let me. All right, no, let you me... just did that accidentally. You're correcting yourself live. You, we could do this for another five hours. You've done this no, multiple no, no, times. No, 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 no you just did that from... live. You, you were. No, Wait, I'm oh, hold on. I'm distinguishing kissing generally. All right, from kissing in the way that you are describing. Nobody right? is talking about kissing, kissing generally. generally. Hot and heavy. Right, you're wrapping your arms around generally, him. Generally, when you're doing it for romantic purposes, is not a sexual no, act. Yeah, we're, we're, nobody's talking about that. Hot and heavy making out, arms wrapped around both sides. I would call it. I would call it when whenever you move to wherever you are primarily focusing on sexual gratification, all right, or sexual desires, or the satisfaction of sexual desires. Uh, oh, 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 sexual desires, sexual gratification, not the same thing. Sexual gratification and orgasms are not the same thing, but at least we're getting it somewhere. Desires. Sexual desire, that's that a... different from, from getting off. Like, I'm, I'm, my sexual desire is elicited when I see cleavage, but that's not, I mean, women wear that shit. Well, then how about this? Can we, all right, then maybe this will help. Can we draw a distinction between sexual kissing and romantic kissing. We wouldn't need to because all I've ever been talking about is sexual kissing and for some reason for 80 times now you felt the need to distinguish between that and the thing we're not talking about which is non-sexual kissing. We don't need to because the distinction there's not just no, a line between these two. We have drawn a canyon between these kissing, two things. Then yeah, I would say that you should not do that in public. Okay. Uh, that you, you can do romantic kissing. Hot in public. and heavy making out like the sex, yeah, like sexy kissing. Yeah, like blah, you should blah. I would say that you should not do sexual kissing in public. I would say right, at least we have we finally get her to ground the fucking axiom, right? Finally got there. We got her to admit at least, at least what her position is, right? We finally ground her down to actually holding a position, to, you know, holding herself to, to taking a position on this issue based off some weird hypothetical. After all of that, fannying around, finally got her to actually commit to something. Find a room. That's what the conventional wisdom is. Sure. And okay. by the way, relating this back to the original tweet, this is a big skip away from where we started, which is saying that you should be able to get your partner off. That was, wait, why would you say, why would you say the tweet and then say a thing that wasn't in the tweet? Because that was the implication of it. And I want, I want a, want I want a difference. Well, like, if she thinks that just making out in public is unacceptable, then at least I understand why she thinks that the being barefoot that aroused your partner's foot fetishes is unacceptable. At least I understand now why she's hold this position. Not something that position, not incredibly stupid, but at least at least a position that one can hold and not, and not be, in, and, and still be consistent. Riley, I just need to Riley, I want, yes, I'll read it in just a second, but what you, said. that's right, so even if Doe uh, said that that was what they meant in that, or what, what it meant in that tweet, uh, it is irrelevant to the fact that the tweet itself, in the context already provided, was something that you felt elicited accusations of pedophilia defense, and I no, want you, no. wait, yes, the tweet was all you had. No, I think that any reasonable person can look at that and come away with a meaning. No, she literally, she literally did, she literally, the original clip that Doe showed on its stream originally, when Riley was uh, accusing it of being permissive of pedophilia, right, was shown before the discussion that they had around whether that tweet or not didn't do, do, do that. Riley did that in her own time, completely independent of Joe, right? Joe then brought that up on stream and then they had a conversation about it. And Vorsh is specifically referring to that original clip which Riley did independently of Doe, right? That's the, that's the distinction here. I don't know why that she's pulling it forward. And yes, I am British, wasn't it, Mad? Um, I mean, I couldn't, I've not thought about the moral case for reparations, but 
there does need to be the do the British are at fault for um for shitting over Palestinians. That is true. Oh yeah, this is talking about a foot fetish. Yes, right? a foot yes, but not orgasm. If you're talking about someone specifically trying to appeal, like it's not just yeah. a foot fetish. Riley, oh, Riley, honest fetish. question. Do you know how sex works? What yes. you can you well, can you satiate you, no, you no, can stop, satiate a fetish without it being no. driven to fulfill an orgasm. No, that's I'm almost concerned right. for you. I know what the meaning of reasonable is. No, no, right? no, 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 stop. No, stop, no, no, stop. Wait, wait. No, do, do you recognize me, that a sex, do you recognize, like treat you in good faith, do you recognize that to, not all, keep on the topic, do you right? recognize that not all sexual behavior is designed to end an orgasm? Yes, I understand that. Okay. That's the reason why, that is the reason why I do not define sexual acts according to orgasm. So I agree what with about you. the foot in fetish tweet implies orgasm? Um, in the original, so wait, hold on. So in the original tweet, we are talking about, Riley doesn't consider an orgasm or not to be indicative of something sex act. Why the fuck did she even mention it in the first place? Why how is that in any way relevant to any of the discussions that have been had, whether or not an orgasm is achieved, apart from the fact that she mentioned it one time in a different hypothetical, right? Why is she trying to apply it now to this hypothetical? She's just continually moving the goalpost and pivoting away from the initial position she was trying to hold in the first place. This is nonsensical. I guess she's just been cornered and she's refusing, she's refusing to take the L, which, fair, plenty of people would do the same thing. Uh, um, I think it's, I want to be very particular in my wording. The question, initially, is whether or not it was reasonable to be able to say in this situation, whether or not it was reasonable to say that this is something which ends up justifying sex acts in front of kids. Okay, yes, right? we're talking about sex acts, not All orgasm. Right. So in this situation, so there's two different things here, right? The first situation is the fact that if we're talking about whether or not this justifies sex acts in front of kids, the answer to that question is yes. I think that is apparent from a yeah, clean like of this, but you already agreed. Yes, okay. you already agreed. Like that... doing the hot and heavy makeout in front of kids, right? So hold on, wait, wait, let's stay on this topic, all right? We're, we're talking we're... about a foot fetish and appealing to someone's foot fetish. You yeah. would agree that is a sex act, right? Yeah, like a hot makeout. Yes, both of those are so, sex acts. All right, so- In, in fact, I would actually say- that, know, I would actually say- right? the, and we I would know actually say- Wait, Riley, case, Riley, Riley, this is not- I'm not interested enough in this conversation for you to think that I'll just mute you instead of hearing out. Riley, to be clear, a makeout sesh is significantly more involved than being barefoot around a person with a foot fetish, okay? In that, there's no physical contact. At least in a makeout sesh, you're touching each other in public. There's PDA there. It's not PDA to look at your partner. And also, both parties are acting within the sex act when you're making out like that, right? Whereas if you're just tr if you're just engaging with someone else's foot fetish, they're having an involuntary reaction to an act that you're doing, right? They may be getting, they may be being titillated by it, but that is an involuntary thing they have because of their foot fetish, whereas you're the one engaging in going foot, in going shoeless or whatever. But in the make out you're both doing it, like... Who's barefoot. So, in fact, the makeout session that I have illustrated here is actually, I think, more inappropriate than the thing that you called Doe a pedophile over. Oh, sorry. Said, said it enabled pedophilic arguments over. So let me... All right, so hold on. So we just... I think that we're almost at, like, the point of this, right? You would agree with me that this tweet is talking about a sex act. You said that earlier, right? Yes. Okay. This tweet is justifying doing a sex act in front of children. Like, yes, yes no? like I think people should be able to make out in public. Yes. Again, okay. the, the way you're reducing right. it is so deliberately like click answer, oriented, but yes. So the answer, all right. So if I say that this is a kind of argument that leads someone to either negligently or intentionally justify pedophilic beliefs of wanting to be able to involve children in sex. Do I involve in children? I don't think that is an unreasonable read of this tweet since we have agreed. No, I think it's insane. About, since we've agreed that it justifies doing sex acts in front of kids. No, I think that's insane. I think you, what you're essentially saying is that if you have a makeout sesh with a person and you're in public and a kid sees you and you defend that you think that, that there's later, a difference between a makeout session and appealing to someone's foot fetish? Yeah, actually, a makeout session is way the fuck more involved. There's physical contact and people can see what's going on. With a foot fetish, literally nobody knows because you're just but barefoot. It you just see a barefoot person. Nobody knows, though. So yeah, so I would actually say that. So first of all, neither of them enable pedophilia. But second of all, that the makeout sesh is actually whatever ah. characteristics you're approximating the makeout sesh is much more so so the, no, but, it the, doesn't, but it doesn't matter the whole point is that it doesn't matter if the kids don't know the point is that you but justify, what, what they see matters isn't no, it that's why we care about pda being able to do sex acts in front of kids that is the point it doesn't matter if they don't know i would say that their consent is violated yeah i would i would i, I think i've more no, or less exhausted my you, patience here i would say the only thing that's happening is that you're thinking about you're thinking about about some like your you have like titillated thoughts in your head like if it's just in your head no one's fucking involved all the as far as far as far as like the consequences all the children see are some people standing there and one person has bare feet that's literally fucking it right that's literally it it's, it's nonsensical what you're making right here is an argument that hurts children i think this is a moralist wait. like wait hold on what? i think this is insane wait oh riley i will i'll mute you
I think this is an insanely moralist argument that serves no purpose other than to dilute the meaning of actual child sex abuse, and you're using it specifically because you have some kind of weird fucking beef with the subject. I think it's borderline reprehensible that you would ever try to hop onto something as innocuous as making out with people in you public agree that and use it to justify how is that like making out like making you think making out in public is tantamount to non-consensually involving children in acts. You I hope that God, that you've never made out with somebody in public, in Riley, because if that's what you were thinking of, I'm disgusted. Jesus, fuck. I hung up. I would have had to, because there's no condition under which Riley would have ever ended that conversation. Like, Riley yeah, probably could have kept going for six hours. That's it's fucking absolute, revolt. Absolutely, he's absolutely right to do so, because she, she just couldn't take the L and realize that none of her analogies made sense. She doesn't have a proper concrete addition of what constitutes sexual act sexual desire, violence, consent, involving in a sexual act. None of these things she had any reasonable definition for within the confines of the discussion, and she could not take the fucking L. No, she really can't. She really can't do it. It's, it's, and like, and, and Vosha's right here. Like, if she, if she is genuinely of that belief, like, and she's made out of people in public, then, like, then she's just killed, like, absolutely blowing my mind. Let's see what else she has. There's some closing thoughts here. Thing. This is literally QAnon tier shit. The people who will uh, dilute uh, the definition of like child sexual abuse by fear mongering over it and invoking like Christian morality in an effort to like make everything they don't like adjacent to child sexual abuse and child sexual abuse charities are like, please stop. You're actually ruining our ability to really fix this issue. Yeah, like holy shit. No, it's not QAnon. Makes more sense. Yeah, I've never heard a QAnoner say making out in public is tantamount to fucking non consensually involving children in sex acts. Holy shit. Well, I look forward to her being added to the fucking BDS cabal. But Jesus Christ. Like the worst part about all this is obviously like the um framing for all of this was all the kink of pride stuff and as i said at the start of the stream like i think there's a nuanced conversation to be had about what we think is acceptable to have in front of children at pride parades right and how in which we can make our pride parades as inclusive as we can so that people don't feel like put off from attending because end of the day pride should be welcoming for everybody right and i think we can we can have a reasonable conversation about what is and is not acceptable what constitutes what kind of kink things constitute a public sex act that is too across the line so far that it would put children off attending the pride parade, right? I think we'd have a conversation about that. But we can't have a conversation about that with somebody who thinks making out in front of children is involving them in sex acts. We just can't do that. We cannot square that circle. It's in, it's pointless even trying to make those comparisons. Like, R Riley is not in a position to be able to have a, a discussion, a reasonable, nuanced discussion about kink or pride with such, quite frankly, lunatic takes on what constitutes um, public sexual acts and public and you know, children, like theoretical public children's involvement in as, in as such, because she doesn't have a proper de definition for anything. She like the overall utility of the thing that she's claiming would make it would just be impossible to police. What not to make out in public? Like, come on, at Pride? What the fuck do you think this is? I, 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 I can't... It, it's close, my, close my mind. That and the horrendous behaviour towards Doe uh, in the conversation that she had with it was repugnant, quite frankly. And the way that she talked about its um, CSA um, experiences were utterly indefensible. I don't know how anybody could be a fan of Riley after this. Like, if anyone says they happily support Riley Grace after this conversation, like, like, this is, like, I hate the idea of just, like, imputing someone far enough to cancel them, but surely this is the line. Surely this is the line. What the kind of, the, the, the behaviour that, that, she, that she engaged in with regards to Doe and the conversation they had with, her, with, the, with its stories of CSA. Like, surely, surely that's the line. And clearly she can't operate in good faith either. I don't know. What, wait, what time are we even on? Ten to eleven. Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, uh, that's the end of that segment. Fuck me. That took forever. Two and two hours forty-seven minutes. That's a lot of stuff about Riley Grace Rochon. Anyway, that's plenty of content for people to watch when I upload eventually. Yeah. <laughs>